Oh gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What a way to start. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, um, uh, welcome, you guys. Uh, um, this is uh, Angela Mitchell, drunk, dump drunk and Dalish here with our fearless uh, Dragon Age Day founder, Teresa. And Hello. Our, Hello, Teresa. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Our fabulous and equally fearless Dragon Age Day co-founder, Savvy Savannah. Hi, Hi Savvy. And we are, we are so privileged to have with us today the fabulous duo, Patrick Weeks and Karen Weeks. And we are so happy to see your wonderful faces. And, uh, and I'm going to stop sounding weird. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but, uh, Thank you for having us. This is so just, cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's our, I, I'm weird. It's done. Okay. Um, <laughs> But we're so happy to have you guys with us. And what we have done is proudly curated weird, wild, wonderful questions from across all social media for you to really rip apart. I, I saw mean, some of them. There were some good ones. We want carnage. You know, we're looking for just devastation um, in the best way. In the week's tradition. This is about the over under toilet paper slash paper towel. Post. That <laughs> one is going to be the most contentious. I'm almost sure. Okay, Wait a minute. I, I did not. On the toilet paper one, I saw the one where it comes down in the front. Yeah. Is how I've always liked it. Yeah. Is, is, yeah. is it not how yeah. you've always liked it? Yeah. Okay. No, so we're in agreement on this. Okay. 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 We were. okay. We were. No, agreement? no, but I have. No, I know what happened. You saw it the day when it was in there turned around, right? Okay. I saw someone online post a thing that posted. Here is your cat pulling it down and destroying it. If you have it the other way, the cat can't pull it down and destroy it. No, that's not true. So. Yeah, they why, still can. <laughs> you see, that's why you don't let your cat play with toilet paper when it's a kitten. Then it doesn't learn that toilet paper equals. We oh, try. That's not no, true. That's not the true. The wild thing that happened though is in the upstairs in the main bathroom the other day, it was turned around. Yeah. And I knew it wasn't you because you like it the same I way as do me. It the correct way, yeah. So it had to have been one of our kids. And I was desperately <laughs> torn between, no, it doesn't go that way. And oh my God, you changed the toilet paper by yourself. So <laughs> right. you know, I didn't say anything because I really wanted to positively reinforce the independence of stopping the toilet paper. But it was uh, like, I had a long internal debate with myself in the bathroom about yeah, whether fair. to bring it up. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> my Frodo used to grab it, would actually get on the counter and reach down and grab it from the top. So oh it didn't gosh. matter which way it went, he would just grab, and then he would jump down with it and run through the apartment. So Yeah, I feel like if it's dangling down either way, they don't really care how it's rolled. So Although Baby Horse has done the most toilet paper damage recently, he will get the rolls and just like carry them around the house and then shred them. Mm -hmm. So Does he eat them? I, yeah, yeah he likes eating tissues. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a list after that, I'm sure, yeah. of other items in the house. Yeah. Yes, yeah. at all. <laughs> you guys, I'm kind of worried because I did not get the toilet paper question in my list. So oh, I'm just no. upset. What else have I missed? That's all I'm well, saying. That's okay. Um, We've hit it. Well, and then paper towels are another thing. And our paper towel holder is sideways. So I don't even know what's up with that. Yeah. Like it does it stand like you know it stands on a cap mine stands like I don't yeah well it's, it's like a stand it actually attaches to the side of the cabinet but yes it's the, oh okay the the dowel is vertical so is it I guess under its clockwise literature yeah it could be here for three hours if we go there so maybe we should just move on. <laughs> I was just thinking of what a fire has is in honor of author Jordan Hawk. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, good. Good. See, we felt that one. Sure, great. <laughs> Woo! So, facing forward and winter shades. We are absolutely <laughs> here <professionals> for that. Professionals. <laughs> <The real magic. laughs> um, I, I do want to ask uh, both of you, how are you guys doing in this very strange, weird 2020 surreal world we find ourselves in? I mean, I think... Compared to a lot of people, we're actually really lucky. We have jobs we can do from home pretty easily. I have to say, EA has been incredibly supportive in terms of everyone take care of yourselves. Um, if we have to take care of kids or someone who's sick or deal with kids who are homeschooled, which ours is not, not homeschooled, but like doing schooling from home. Um, the past couple of months, Albert has, uh, COVID cases have been just spiking horrendously. So the, our kids just started online school again so we're all here and our poor internet is just 
having a having right. a, um, but you know, we can still work. Uh, we're very fortunate, and it's still really hard. So we, yeah, so we we are aware of how much harder it is for those who are less fortunate than we are. Yeah, and, and I'm and not looking forward to going back to pants. <laughs> I know, I right? Go upstairs, I'm like, I gotta change out of my work clothes, and my work clothes are a slightly <laughs> nicer T-shirt. <laughs> well, and um, also for those of us who have like long hair and stuff, it's like I've had two or three days where I didn't, didn't feel the need for a brush, and you know, returning to a world where that is no longer uh, an yeah. option is going to be like sad. People for like me. care about that, and like you other know, people cut our hair. I kind of liked seeing where it was going, just the surprise of it, you know. A little bit, yeah. So, so Karen cut my hair this morning. It did. So that I <laughs> it looks look, very nice. I was so wondering. I look fashion. Well, up until then, it's been uh, since July, because we, because Alberta opened partially back in July, so we got to go get haircuts then, and it had gotten real long. And Karen was having me wear hair clips for the first time. Oh, that's cool. fabulous. And I am, I'm they pronouns non-binary. I'm not necessarily wearing hair clips non-binary. So it was a new thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But easing into it. It's, right a, it's a new thing. I'm just glad the blue is still there, Patrick. I love the blue. Yeah, that was the one thing I did. I, I ordered a bunch of because our, our kids got, we all got, well, y'all got, yeah. You, yeah. You blew yourselves? Oh, yeah, we blew. Okay. <laughs> so I got a bunch of uh, arrested development. Um, I, uh, I, I know it well. I know exactly where yes. you're talking from. Thank you. Okay. Um, I mean, I would say that independently, but I wasn't this time. Um, but yes. Yeah, so anyway, I got a bunch of dyes. So we've been re dyeing everyone because, you know, there's not a lot else to do. And Right. I mean, this is the time. Yeah. Also, this is it. We should all explore. Those colors. I'm just we might as well, yeah. right? Yeah, do you have colors, the hairstyles, color? everything? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have. Yeah, mine's kind of. Okay, there we go. Okay, the light. Where is the light? I see Everything's it. Backwards. It's Head towards the light. Exactly. <laughs> the light it's is the end of the tunnel. Reddish, sort of, which you can't see against. No, it's my very it's Canadian amazing. flannel, but the sun has set and it's cold, so I'm putting my flannel on. <laughs> <laughs> this is really funny, by the way, to have. Patrick in shirt sleeves and completely comfortable in a t-shirt and you're bundled up like a blizzard is on the way. Correct. <laughs> this is pretty much how. This is my, my metabolism versus her metabolism. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is great. Are and you, Felix, are you doing okay? Felix is fine. Five eight hours. Just like everyone to know, Felix is They're great. just, yeah, and, and, and by the way, uh, you got pup mobile behind you just baby horse is completely posing. So yeah, yeah, yes, now right. we're trying to make sure can be seen. You, you got kind of a sphinx thing going. Are you posing? Are you being a sphinx? He says, I'm a Fen Harrell statue. I know he is doing a Fen Harrell statue. He's doing a pretty good yeah, job. You are a dread look. You are a dread look. He does have the best ears. He gets his really ears. Amazing. And the widow's peak too. He's got kind of an Eddie, yeah. Eddie Munster thing going. Yeah, he really does. Yeah. It's it's your Eddie Munster. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'm laughing because Tia's snorting and it's making her laugh more. <laughs> That's good. Snorting. As it always good. should, right? You know. Okay, so we're 16 minutes and we've tackled toilet paper. Paper, yeah. toilet paper, paper towels. It's good. Hair dye and bras. You know, yeah. yeah. And bras. Yeah. I think we're hitting all the all okay. the. All the it's a solid. All okay. This is great. Questions. I feel like our right. hands are going to come away going, "Damn, this is pretty much what we want." Yeah. And by the way, and it's still an improvement on last year because I think I was just. Artic inarticulate and squealing for the first <laughs> um, we're doing good okay well you. i'm gonna dive into these knowing that we're gonna take wonderful tangents and end up in the forest and far yeah. from the beaten path and singing sondheim songs but i'm going for it <laughs> okay here we go so gilder thalen asks there has been a lot of tie-in media to the dragon age series and with fans hungry for more lore, we start looking in all the odd places. How canon are things like the tabletop RPG, flash games, the IDW comics, theme park rides, and what can we ignore in the search for puzzle pieces? Um, <laughs> this is where we get in trouble, depending on what our answers are. <laughs> we know that you can't always say everything, so yes. 
if someone if a lawyer will drop out of the ceiling on yeah, you I a giant it. dawn well, silverite sword if you say it <laughs> please don't well so when we work with other people um on you know with people outside the studio on our products it's through our business development group and so mm -hmm. um you know we're someone from the team is usually consulting with them regarding story directions and things like that mm -hmm. so um you know for anything that's released in association mm -hmm. with bioware officially tm um <laughs> Thank all you. of that you know i mean i we we try to give people i think the the general idea is to try and give people leeway you know and, and so sort of say here is an area or part of lore or something if you want to explore that go for it you know sort of here's we give them some background in, in terms of rules and things and you know, here's what magic can and can't do, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll sort of check stuff to see if it. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I would say, for me, the question is how much, how much story is there, how much yeah. lore is there, because um, something like, um, oh, I'm gonna blank on the name, uh, the, the web series that Felicia Day did. Oh, uh, right, Redemption. Oh. Yeah, Dragon Age Redemption, um, you know, she ran that by people and was kind of working on the lore. You know, that's something that we have checked to make sure that, okay, it might not be everything exactly the way we would have done it, but it doesn't really break anything at a hard and fast okay. level. As opposed to, say, something like Dragon Age Heroes, uh, if I'm remembering, is Dragon Age Heroes is the, is the, the turn, uh, the, the mobile game. It's the little mobile yes. game. Yeah, so yeah, the mobile game. I play and that. Where, <laughs> yeah, and that's where you can have uh, Empress Selene, yeah. Uh, slave Fenris and two Herlocks fighting side <laughs> by side. Yes, I mean, okay. Well, that one, no. So that one's fine. That's, that, yeah. You know, that's, we have okay. abandoned all lore and time. Yeah. That's, and that's, that. that makes sense. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. That's not. That's not canon in the same way that the people don't work. Yeah. That technically Mario Kart isn't canon. That doesn't make right. Mario Kart <laughs> bad because it doesn't <laughs> adhere to yeah. the canon of whether Mar the, the Mario and Peach cinematic universe. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> oh man, it cut out. I don't hear what Karen said. Oh, I would no, I was I stuttered because I, oh, I was okay. starting to say something and then the Mario Peach Cannon thing hit me. And right, and you just went to another place. Right. What passes for my brain processing, which is not much these days. Um oh, so I was gonna say. So Heroes probably isn't a place where we would insert, you know, super deep lore that <laughs> in terms of picking up on things, you know, that is more fun than very lore heavy. But in short stories that the writers put out and things like that, that kind of thing yeah. is likely to have more tidbits of pertinent lore I think that's fair. things. Right. That. In the Dark Horse okay. comics, we work very closely yeah. with uh, Christina sure. and, Zio, and um and Nick Thornborough, you know, worked very closely with them, did a fantastic job kind of you know, directing things from the Bioware side. And so that was a place where we felt a little bit more comfortable dropping a few more tidbits and saying, okay, this is something that might pay off later. And if you've yeah, read or, some of the Dark Horse comics and then went on to read the Bitter Nights, you can see, hey, some of those played off each other. Okay. Fenris snuggling up with him on Babari is canon. Dang it. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, that's definitely yeah. canon. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> one word. Yeah, one word is canon. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Let's see. <laughs> I lost my place on the list. I'm it's only the second question. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, paper again. I, I'm just I'm saying. Tired. I'm tired. Um, I'm recording this on my lunch break at work. <laughs> <laughs> Her <laughs> name is on it. It says. Oh, it's a <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, if we're going to see if we can get him to crack. It's just now it's time to just wait, oh, talk oh, that's about what? <laughs> that's a nug I've never seen before. It's the golden, the golden nug. <gasps> oh, that's right. <gasps> Oh, is this one that squeaks? No, the pink one squeaks. No, the pink one squeaks. Sorry. Except we don't, we don't, squeak, your butt. we don't squeak the pink one near Felix. No. <laughs> oh, no, because it will instantly, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So here's a fun one throwing out from me. Okay, yeah. Is a group of nugs called a squeak 
or a judgmental squeak? Oh, we've talked about this. <laughs> the answer <laughs> changes on who you, it will change depending on who you're talking to. Okay. Um, I mean, I kind of like a judgment of squeaks now that you said that, but that takes the names out of it all together. So, um, I don't know. What do you think? The judgment of thugs, the squeak of thugs. Because only some of them judge you, but all of them all squeak. Of them squeak. Well, the, so the, more like ones, the, the more insecure ones are deferential nugs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Yeah. I would go with a squeak because I think it applies more across the board to most nugs. I think okay. we've heard it here first. Okay. Yeah. It's a squeak of nugs. A squeak so, of nugs. Good. Actual question. <laughs> of greater mountain nuggalope. I love the nuggalope. What about a thunder? They're bigger than that. Oh yeah, I could go ahead and knuckle with thunder. Yeah, because the knuckles, because they're stomping on their yeah. This is why on we their hand feet. Editors. What is up with the hand feet? Someday we have to talk about the hand feet. Okay. Oh no, those, not are, us. those are scary. <laughs> That's our people, right, Felix? No. What is up with the hand feet? <laughs> I know. Okay, they're a little creepy. Okay, I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> Pal W writes wonders asks any thoughts on a possible tactical game. Oh, I saw someone ask that. Uh, someone, and they, someone specified not just tactics, but like a full strategy game. And I'd like to give my in-depth answer to that. No. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm very bad. Yeah, it's not that we don't want to. It's yeah. that most of us, well, I don't say most. I suck at I will say game. I, yeah. yes. What I can handle is I am very good in small unit teams. So you give me like XCOM has that, that team size of like four to six. I can kind of not get my people killed as long as I'm not playing Iron Man and I can reload and stuff. But as soon as it gets into like large unit battles and stuff, it always becomes a test of, um, well, in Fire Emblem, it's how far can I get my Pegasus Knight? <laughs> and surprise, I can get my Pegasus Knight real. Oh, no. Did it freeze for you, too? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, there we go. We had a little okay, there we go. tiny freeze. OK. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. It's okay. It was exciting. Internet is wow. so I think just that your internet connection is yeah. unstable, so mm -hmm. sorry. It's sorry. okay. No, it added a, an element of suspense. It's great. Oh, good. <laughs> so yes, the short answer is no, because I'm really bad at them. Uh, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good at small unit skirmishes. I do not have the head for commanding armies in battle. I still think you guys are missing out on your some DLC ideas here, like oh, like I'm a wicked say. grace. Yeah, there are yeah, just because we to the two of us are saying no, we are only two of the hundreds of people who right. make decisions like this. So, you know. Right. I'm personally waiting for Sylvan's versus her locks. <laughs> I, I want a Wicked yeah. Grace DLC, you know, where we just play Wicked Grace with Varric and everybody forever and <laughs> Yeah. The, 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 I would say, yeah, the devs who play Civilization and don't get nuked by Gandhi are probably <laughs> They, they might be able to make a Dragon Age strategic game and do a great job. And we would wish them the best of luck from over on the other side of the room. <laughs> we do have Dragon Age weeks or, um, you know, a week or even just across all of Bioware where we can, you know, take a week to work on stuff like that. And so people investigate, you know, anything that's fun, card games and board games and just all kinds of stuff. And there have been some things, you know, that end up going into games that the big games that come out of those weeks. So um, you fun. never know. You did make a card game. My card game was fun and slightly too long to play as a mini game inside, <laughs> uh, inside Dragon Age. But, uh, but yeah, someone did a Dragon Age kind of take on risk and it was really fun. Well, wow. people better at it than me. And I, mean, I, I was working in, in a, a SNES. Dragon Age game that was kind of fun, so we were just, you know. It just occurred to me, actually, that we could, we could actually be pretty tactical in certain renditions of the tabletop, the Dragon yeah. Age TTRPG, yeah. if we wanted to as well, which would be fun, because we all play it here, I think, all of us. Oh, nice. Savvy, cool. do you play it? No, I just did my first uh, tabletop RPG session yesterday. Yay! Okay, oh, cool. Over. So, what did you play? 
um, Dren Dungeons and Dragons something. Yay! I don't know. I mean, I'm a new D and D is all you need. That's cool. <laughs> and who are you playing? What character were you? Myself. <laughs> are you a, what? What? What's your class? Are you a bard? Are you a you know? I'm a, a, I'm a rogue. You're a rogue. A rogue cat with yes. a mustache. Okay. Oh. Yes. Yes. I keep staring at the cat with the mustache. It's the cutest it's so cat. Cute. It's, it's adorable. So it's adorable. His name is Stash. Stash, Aww. which is the perfect name for a perfect cat. Oh, thank you. I always say Dorian would love that cat. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, Savvy, um, you have the next okay. question. Yes. Let's see. Haggis McHaggis wants to know. <laughs> what has been the hardest Dragon Age story you have worked on so far? And if you could cosplay as a character from Dragon Age, who would it be? So I did respond to that one on Twitter, the second part of that question, um, with uh, a, a catalog of the things we have cosplay cosplayed thus far. Uh, so I've done Celine, uh, Empress Celine, from the cover of Patrick's book, The Masked Empire. Available in fine bookstores everywhere. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely. Um, that Please was really order hard. from independent bookstores. Right. And that was from uh, fun because uh, Ramil Sunga, who did the gorgeous illustration on the front, you know, works with us. So I can say, Ramil, what is this thing? Is this a sleeve? How does this work? And so it was really fun <laughs> to have him there to help, you know, develop some of the 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 costume and put it together. And then awesome. the the boys and I made Patrick a uh, Lego iron bowl for Halloween. Oh, awesome. That was kind of fun, except we used the wrong kind of paint and almost killed you and Mike Laidla, I think, when you were sharing an office because the paint wasn't dry. <laughs> yeah, so that happened. Um, and I have cosplayed as Scout Harding, and you have cosplayed as Derek. And you were a Flemeth also, weren't you, Karen? Actually, I've not pulled off Flemeth yet, unfortunately. That, that's kind of my dream thing. Okay. I, I um, take pictures with every Flemeth cosplayer I can find. That's probably why it's in my as, Yeah, so because Flemeth is... is Flemeth? <laughs> Flemeth. Like, you know, it's hard to have favorite characters when we work with so many, but Flemeth is definitely up there. Um, because the older I get, the more I can relate to an old lady who will get crushed <laughs> right? and turn into a dragon and eat you if you make her mad. Right. So, yeah, there's nothing not to love about that. So, yes. And we did hawks very early on, but I don't know where those pictures are. So, so of the characters we haven't cosplayed, is there anyone you would like to cosplay? I mean, Flemeth, if I <laughs> weighed 100 pounds less and had any talent yeah. at all, oh, I would stop. love that. No, no, Flemeth is Flemeth. so complicated, though. Flemeth is like all the the hair the, horns, the rivets, and the hair horns. Flemeth is hard, so yeah. I could, yeah, I love her. I could take some acting lessons from Gareth David Lloyd, and then do a little solace, a little just take this off with a kind of you know. We could do a bald cap. Yeah. I could put the bald cap. Put my fin <laughs> on. on. <laughs> You freak me out when you don't have hair. That's just, that's my only thing. I know, it's a thing. It's, but, it's, um, it's probably good for your mental health that, that they do. Yeah. No, you would. That would actually be really scary. There are just some lines that shouldn't be crossed. Yeah, like, it's a little too real, I think. <laughs> like, you slip into it too easily these days. And Oh, that's good. That's really good to know. Yeah, right. you heard it here first. No, <laughs> yeah. that would be that would be worrisome. I was yeah. just entertained when Gareth posted about his wife playing DAI. Oh, and right, she was romancing Solace, and it's like that's got to be weird. That's like weird. they're that's on the screen, very strange. It's there on the screen, and behind you, he's also going, "Hey, honey, we got to take the trash out." I mean, it's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. He's so smooth when he's doing, when he's, he's yeah, his voice is great. Although we were laughing the other day, uh, we were talking about how in the writing room, um, it's particularly with banter, uh, you know, by the time the writers get to banter when we're working on a game, they're very familiar with their characters because they've probably written most of the main missions and, mm -hmm. and follower quests and stuff. And so they can pretty much talk to each other, like not with like the voice actor voices, but like how their characters would talk. And so that's sort of where the banter, a lot of the banter comes from. And 
people are getting a little punchy by that point. So it's, you know, from funny to sad. And occasionally um, during, uh, who are we talking to? It was about romances and writing romances. And, you know, joking that every once in a while, you know, I'll be editing something that they wrote. And, you know, there's a back and forth. And it was like, wait, I said that. <laughs> like, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, I read, and, and there's, you know, people, David, stop flirting. Right. <laughs> which would be, I was going to say, which would be great if I think the line wasn't like suck it up, buttercup, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> that was Samantha Trainer in Mass Effect. Yes, that's what it was. Yes, that's right. Um, but even, or like, you know, we'll have been out to lunch or something, and then, you know, I'll read something, and it's like, oh, that's that discussion that they were having at lunch. So it, it is kind of funny how that. <laughs> also, boy, if you want the writers in the room to just dogpile you mercilessly, putting the soulless voice on is the way to do it. <laughs> I, I can see that. Because I don't think all the writers appreciate soulless as much as some of us. <laughs> I think sometimes the writers will say stuff like, okay, so... And then Sola says this because, of course, he does because he thinks he's better than everyone else. And then I'll just have to gently go in and say, I understand how, from your limited viewpoint, it might <laughs> seem that way. But if you had the capacity to understand more right. fully, you would appreciate the nuances. Interrupt, interrupt, and interrupt, then they're interrupt, just interrupt, like, interrupt. we don't even have interrupts in our conversation system. And somehow everyone is pelting me with erasers. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> and mentally punching solace. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, um, I have a, another fabulous question here for you. Uh, YTC Shepherd, good name, is curious to hear what is on your playlist these days? music wise yes oh okay i have a kind of an esoteric one but it's cool so my sister uh, a couple weeks ago said you should watch this movie called fisherman's friend it's ridiculous and it's super cute it's like a great cheesy feel-good movie and it very much is and so it's about uh this musical group called fisherman's friends and they're a group of gentlemen from cornwall Port Isaac, Cornwall. Oh, wow. Okay. And they are, a lot of them are fishermen or have worked, uh, you know, on rescue boats, but they've all, you know, grown up in this little, little part of Cornwall. And they started singing a cappella shanties, you know, first they'd sing it on the boats, but then they, they're all members of various choirs in their community. And then they started singing these shanties um, as fundraisers on the plat, which is what they call the beach where the harbor is. And um, one thing led to another, and they got picked up by a record label. And in the early 90s or late 90s i think and released this record that was a hit record in the uk and then they got this movie which bears only the faintest resemblance to what actually their story is but it's still a really cute movie and they put out like three or four albums of these amazing sea shanties and so i've been totally hooked on on all of those and they're just robust and manly singing and you know i just want to get on a ship and not be in my basement anymore <laughs> it's just really appealing to the escapist part of me so they're great and they're fun i think my favorite part uh, being in the room when karen was watching that is because before karen was watching that karen was watching a bbc paranormal investigation show called truth seekers <laughs> so it, was kind of like, how, it was like sit, sitcom kind of Ghostbusters or whatever. And so I'm listening over there and I'm listening to sea shanties <laughs> and, 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 a, and a talent scout and stuff. And after about 15 minutes, I'm like, I look over and I'm like, Babe, I'm starting to think there's not going to be a ghost in this one. Yeah. <laughs> because Felix is cleaning himself. So I'm kind of oh, okay. 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 protecting us from that. Well, we'll pull, we'll We'll edit in a, the famous bio where I could I could blur it. We'll just hold it yeah. for that. It's okay. It's <laughs> Wait, are you decent okay. again. Okay. Good. Good. Decent again. Um, for my part, when I'm not listening to Karen Sea Shanties, um, <laughs> I have okay. So my stuff that I'm listening to with vocal. Of course, there's a story involved. Well, there's not that much of a story, but that's never stopped me before. Um, <laughs> It's a lot of, wow, this is going to come back and bite me. It's a lot of Carly Rae Jepsen. Mm -hmm. 
We know that like, everyone knows this. Is a joke. Like, <laughs> we really, we have questions about this later for you, Patrick. Yeah, okay? the other Jeff specifically, a lot of, and a fair amount of lights. Actually, I got into a big lights kick, yeah. and I really like her acoustic stuff. Yeah. Um, but also because I'm working on a novel at home in the spare time, when I'm writing and and when I'm writing at work or at home, I write to movie soundtrack, and I have never seen one of Michael Bay's Transformer movies. But Damn, do we have all the music? But those soundtracks, <laughs> slap. those soundtracks are good, man. It's like, okay, yeah. I mean, I imagine there were explosions going on in the background, but this is really helping to get through the scene. This is great. I'm a huge movie soundtrack nerd, but I have to admit, I don't know the soundtracks to the Transformers movies. So the Transformer I movies are Jablonski. So I, I have a lot of oh, him. Okay. I have a, and I have Brian Tyler's, because um, he does the Fast and the Furious movies. Mm -hmm. So I have a fair number of those. So you have lots of adrenaline when you're writing all of these to all of these. Yeah, because it's usually I will I will occasionally switch into something you know sadder if I'm writing a part with a bunch of feels. But yeah, when I'm writing and trying to get the blood pumping for like, okay, I have to imagine there are things exploding and you're making choices and people are people are dying because of your choices, you know, hypothetically. Right, of course. Um, <laughs> that yeah, you I, I I need to have something that's that's got some. Okay. <laughs> that is something that really gets to the grim gritty realism in which we find ourselves hello like right now this hello, is grim hello. Hello. such to, gritty realism time to pet the wolf hey. oh. <laughs> okay well yeah, thank you those are great and what's that, what's that one we were teasing you about the other day that really poppy um, the Dua Lipa? Not Dua Lipa. The other one. Or is it Sarah McLaughlin? That was no, a big Sarah McLaughlin is when I write Cole. <laughs> <laughs> Diplo? <laughs> you can never cosplay us because wow, you yeah. get too weird. I might not come back. Um, <laughs> no, the other one, and it's, the video is just like lots of boobs and it's at the beach. That doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Dua Lipa, but it's Lake Dua Lipa. We'll get okay, back to you're it. You're gonna think of it later. You're gonna think of it later. So just 3 a.m. sit up, right upright in bed and go, oh, that's what it is. Yes. No, carry on. I'll find it. I know it's on here. All right. Okay. EKD writing wonders. What do you look for in a writer that applies to the team? Side note, they love you guys. <laughs> so let's see. We look for um we look for a tricky mixture of the ability to uh, the ability to write with your own style and bring something new to the table, um, but also the ability to mesh with the group. Because while you know I can bring Bull or Cole or Solus to the table, and Luke can bring Sarah or everyone else he's written, mm -hmm. uh, Cheryl can bring Liliana. We all have to write the protagonist. We all have to write. Hawk or the Inquisitor or the hero of Ferelden. Um, and so they have to feel consistent when they do that. Yeah, and it has to feel like it wasn't eight different writers. And we lean on the editors a lot for that. Um, but we also, it, it really does take someone who has both a strong voice and an ability to be a bit of a chameleon. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we look for, frankly, is the ability to take feedback and give feedback mm -hmm. um, because the writer's room is we are i don't know compassionately merciless i suppose mm -hmm. you you know you're gonna you're gonna put your writing up and other people are gonna read it and people are gonna say this part was really good i love this this part did not make sense at all it kind of really confused me and i wasn't sure if you meant this you're like oh that was really the, you know, did you mean this really offensive thing? And I was like, oh no, oh no, I didn't. Oh dear, that's not good. Um, I think a lot of it is by day, yeah. in, in seriousness. You do a good job of creating an atmosphere. When we have, we call these peer reviews. And so we'll read a certain part and everyone will go in and there's an expectation and sort of a, an agenda about how you give feedback. And you know, just assuming that feedback is given in good faith and you can take it in good faith and that people, because it's hard when you're doing stuff like this, when you're doing something you're passionate about to separate yourself from your work and when you're doing it and getting paid for it, you kind of have to. And so 
um, just it's important to remember that your work is not you and when it's being critiqued right. it's not you're not being critiqued it's this thing did not work and you know I mean if you've been writing for a while you know the first draft is just that and it's gonna suck yeah. Then there's parts of it that will suck and um, but just to take that that little extra step and try and remove yourself and so it, there's a lot of skill in presenting feedback in an appropriate way um, and or like one good example of it if someone has an issue where say say we're discussing a soulless conversation <laughs> I say wow soulless really talks way too much here and then if the next person after me says it agrees all they have to say is ditto so Patrick doesn't have to hear 10 people say wow soulless wit talks way too much here and so we'll just say ditto mm -hmm. and Patrick knows ah okay this is probably something I need to look at if okay. everyone agrees it doesn't have to get like over the head yeah. of it. And what I do on my, on my, as I'm taking notes, is I will say, Solace talks too much in this scene. And then for each dinner, I just put a little plus next to it. <laughs> and so if, if I cut to the end of the feedback and I've got, if one person said Solace talked too much in that scene, I go, okay, well, maybe, maybe I'll go with that. Maybe I won't. I'll look and see what's right. If eight people said Solace talks too much in that scene, it doesn't really matter if I think they just aren't deep and complex enough to understand what I, my artistic intent. It really probably right. is Obviously. all of our failings. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, if it's eight of them, yeah, the odds are pretty good that the viewing public will also feel the same way. So what we look for from a prospective writer is someone who can both give constructive feedback and say, here, here's what didn't work, here's what I might have done differently, and also take it, like Karen said, mm -hmm. um, the ability to take it, to not take it personally, and to take it and take the right lesson. If someone says, hey, this scene you wrote was really good, but this character didn't work for me, um, and the reason they didn't work for me was because their voice was too similar. Can, they, can, can I give someone that feedback, and can they come back and rewrite the scene to address that problem, but still keep the spark of what made the scene good in the first place? I do both just because it's nice, but also to help encourage the work, you know, is when something is good, say, oh my gosh, that was great. This interplay between these two characters is great. Mm -hmm. The way you set the scene is great. This voice is great. Both because it's nice, but also so, you know, people can go, okay, great, good. I'll keep doing that because that part's working. So. Well, yeah. and, and take it to an extreme um, level, it also seems like, I know you guys have talked in the past about Sometimes somebody maybe wrote a character, an entire character that they love and are attached to. They care about the character. They think they're great. And the character's cut. Like, yeah. completely cut. You know, and it's like, yep. the character. And I, I'm, I'm sure that takes some getting used to as well. I don't know if you, get over, you ever get used to it, but it gets a little bit easier to, you know, after it's happened a few times, that you sort of realize, okay, yes, this is just, this is how it goes. Things get mm -hmm. cut. It's part of the process. We try and, you know, we work with our producers to keep what we're working on in scope, both in terms of time and money. And, you know, it's a very, it's not an exact science. It's very difficult mm -hmm. to get it exactly right. So we are often a little more excited about making things than we have time to make. Them. <laughs> All right, moving on. Doja Cat. Okay, I was waiting for the pause. Doja Cat, <laughs> say so. <laughs> That song, okay. it, I, it came back into my head because it's nominated for a Grammy. Oh, I did not. Be. I was a little flabbergasted when it was nominated for a Grammy. Um, so, not just you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of other people like the Doja too. Okay. Simon Jadis once asked Patrick this question at a con, and the answer was uncertain, but they're asking again just for fun. Uh -oh. no. This is very Justin Long in Galaxy Quest of me to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but right. is there a candidate yeah. for the Battle of Ostagar? again. Is there a canon month or date for the Battle of Ostagar? Um, well, no. <laughs> I mean, not yet. If we ever need there to be one, there absolutely will be, and it will have been canon all along. But <laughs> super no, because I can't even name all the months offhand. <laughs> <laughs> 
I am, I am very good for certain types of deep lore. I am definitely not the person you want for other types of deep lore, and that is why I rely upon people like Mary and Brienne and Sylvia, who are much better at that than I am, and will politely okay. call out when I've accidentally added a real world month to the calendar again. <laughs> okay. How many apostrophes are there in a canon elven sentence? <laughs> That's right. That's Patrick's purview. Not many, quite enough. Too many. <laughs> Way too many. The apostrophes right. are like little bits of the fade waving to They you. are. <laughs> I, I'm a fan of <laughs> oh, poor Karen. They're just looking. I'm so sorry. Yeah, like, they're, they're just waving to you with one finger. It's like... <laughs> Oh, you're just off the camera. Veil just, yeah, in yeah. This sentence. Like the like the eyelashes of the spirit. There's too many effing <laughs> about <laughs> Oh man, that was an if looks could kill you would you put in as many as I am taking out those back and killed out. again. <laughs> you can stick to Canari and just, you know, start adding dashes in there instead. Mm. I just don't irritate me quite as much no, as they really don't. Because I don't know why. why. I have no idea. Because there are dashes everywhere oh, yeah. in Canary stuff. No, I mean, there, there are. Bug me, but just not as much as the... Because yeah, dashes the usually come like between the syllables, and the apostrophes, like, you didn't just sprinkle in from they the just They just happen. They, 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 is, this is yeah, true. and they just appear, and like, I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce that. And... <laughs> Well, I'm still getting oh, over. <laughs> I'm, I'm still getting over my embarrassment over Falassin. So no, okay, but no one had ever said it out loud. So you I say told, how you I told, it. I told my sister. I asked him about an ancient elf, and I made him sound like the guy who used to fix mom's truck. <laughs> I mean, there how was a debate at one point about Falassin. <laughs> <laughs> accents in general. Yeah. I mean, A, people pronounce things differently. Yeah. So you're, you know, you may just may pronounce like differences between even America and Canada. People appear to say process and progress and <laughs> and pasta and cool. things like that. So little pronunciations are normal. Right. And Canadians yeah. would totally say Pelasson and Americans would say Pelasson. <laughs> Pelasson. I mean, that does make some sense, I have to say. It does. I just, I also think that, well, I mean, you know, it is canon for us that Ferelden uses English accents, sorry, British accents, mm -hmm. and Starkhaven uses Scottish, and <laughs> then Ravain sort of used English, but then kind of switched over to, well, Antiva and Ravain both kind of use a little bit of Italian yeah. and Spanish in some places. And and now that like Tevinter is using also because Tevinter used Dorian, so it's got the British. And there occasionally it's a little bit of British yeah. Indian. Tevinter sounds almost high yeah, English I though. Said, it's it's very I proper think. English. Yeah, it yeah sounds... I didn't learn, learn. So originally the Tevin language, ancient language of Tevinter, was based off of Latin. Right. And that was David Gator going. It's like Latin, but not. So. <laughs> That has posed some challenges going forward as well, we try to explore fair. more of what Latin, but not. So, <laughs> to be fair, Latin is the perfect demon summoning language. It really yeah. is, though, right? Yeah, I mean, it makes yeah. sense. Well, I will say, in order to bring more of the Thalassan style pronunciation, and my proposal is that if we ever hypothetically in some future game went to Tevinter, that Tevinter would keep the UK British accent, but anyone who was from Ferelden would talk with the United States Southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> that's how everyone in Tevinter hears the dog lords of Ferelden. That makes sense to me. So, literally the first time I've ever heard No, that. I think this could really work, because then all the Tevinter people would be kind of speaking normally. It's like, well, what do you think? Let's ask the gentleman from Denerim about it. And the gentleman from Denerim would be, well, I think I'll do a little blood magic with her coming in with the motel And I think <laughs> it would work. Really well. about what being in the writer's room is like, this is it. <laughs> this is exactly like Doctor Who, and it's like what they did with in, in when they went to Pompeii. And right. and right and when they actually spoke, right. Uh, Madonna tried to speak Latin, and they were right. accusing well, her of being Welsh, or and she sounded Welsh. <laughs> I am I'm I'm so thrilled right now. I can't even. Okay. 
<laughs> but you must. Yeah, but... I, mean, I tease, but that actually makes a great deal of sense. I'm um, forced to admit. Luckily, I have the next question. Um, Leanne writes, asks, do either of you have a favorite dragon from Dragon Age Inquisition? I always mix up which dragon is what. Well, I liked, there's a lot of them I'm angry at. I liked the, um, I like the Atashi from Trespass. You don't have to kill it. Oh, I love that. Yeah, not having to Because you back. can, because yeah, it was free the dragon, not kill the dragon. Um, but beyond that, I had a soft spot for, um, I thought the Ferelden Frostback was fun to fight because it strafes you. I was just going to say, I have like a masochistic love for the Frostback because it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. and it, it shows up before I'm ready and it eats me every time and it burns me to a crisp, but I don't know, it's still cool somehow. I liked the, um, the Gamorden or Gamorden yeah. Stormrider. Yeah. Because I really, that's the one, it was in, what was it, Exalted Plains? When Exalted Plains turned from plains into marsh in one point, and it was over kind of in a swampy area, and it breathed lightning. And if you were in water, it was a bad day. Oh, yeah. oh that's and right. I just yes. loved that because I was like, as a player, yeah. the first time I got in there was when the game was far enough along that I could have educational life experiences like, <laughs> Hey, I wonder if being in the water is going to hurt me with the light. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sure is. That's a bad idea. And I just, I thought that was a ton of fun. And I just love the coloration. Yeah. yeah. There's some beautiful dragons too. I only, I killed them all for bull one on one playthrough. That was it. And then now I only kill the ones that either kill cats or people. Right. <laughs> That's very reasonable. Yeah. My favorite is the one from Crestwood, simply because the funniest thing that ever happened in one of my playthroughs is the dragon glitched and went into the dragon version of a T-pose and just slid around <laughs> along the ground back and forth. Yes. Nice. It That's broke Dorian. It broke Dorian Bull and Solus. So I'm standing there just like flinging with my staff and going, "Are you going? Are you all going to help me? Okay. No. Okay. That's so funny." Whack a dragon. <laughs> Is that the northern? That was northern hunter. Hunter, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Lavellan 101, oh no, wants to know. <laughs> of right. <Sorry>. Of right. <laughs> Is there Morty Sandal, or is he something the fandom has blown way out of proportion? I hope the former, but suspect the latter. Ah, hey, no, no fighting. <laughs> you don't you don't know. Uh, thank you for saying armpit and not belly roll. But come on. Man. Um. Okay, so Sandal is interesting because we have Sandal is, I would say, quantum. Mm -hmm. Remember, the, we talked about this a little bit last year, where sometimes it's going to rely on how much fan excitement there is. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's going to rely on whether there's, there, you know, whether we look at it someday and go, oh, this is the perfect thing to solve a problem. Yeah. You know, I, have seen, <clears throat> I have seen Sandal is the maker. I've seen Sandal is tied to uh, the Titans that we kind of revealed a little bit in Descent. And, um, you know, I've seen, I've seen a lot of suggestions like that. And... It, you know, all of that is definitely possible, I think, from what's been revealed so far. I think Sandal wasn't much in Inquisition because he was present in Origins, and then we used him a lot more in mm -hmm. 2. And I think at the time on Inquisition, there was a feeling like, okay, we maybe overdid it with Sandal. Let's dial that back or so it doesn't become the Sandal show. And, you know maybe in the future we go, no, that's cool, let's bring him back. Or maybe we go, yeah, you know, actually some parts of that don't feel like they've aged as well and we'll just kind of mm -hmm. let it go. We did get the little Easter egg in Trespasser though, which was fun. We did. Sorry, the dog is sneezing. Uh, that's Rex making weird beagle noises, sorry. <laughs> Technically, that's him clearing his nasal passages <laughs> so that he can use his beagle olfactory powers more effectively. Excellent. To vacuum it's, the floor for crumbs. It's great. <laughs> Every day is a blessing working for crumbs. <laughs> I love that that's ironic. <laughs> I mean, right. For me, it's, it's not ironic. Just, like God's little angels there. <laughs> that is a happy, happy person right there. <laughs> okay, now you get my back. <laughs> you need to go out? 
He knows he's on TV. Oh, no, that's definitely he needs to go out. Yeah, he needs to go. He, need, he knows he's on TV. <laughs> okay. You ready to move on? Okay. Go for it. So, so now you can ask me the questions that you couldn't ask me in front of Karen. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the really Randy Dowager stuff. <laughs> How many scarves fluttered in shock out of five do you want? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Um, Mrs. Finn Harrell is curious. It's not me. It wasn't me. I just want everyone to know it wasn't me. <laughs> not me either. Although, yes, I, um, by the end of the next game, that's what I want. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Sam. Sorry. It's okay. When writing, do you always use a computer or do you write on paper and then type? What's your process? Oh, good question. Um, I always use a computer. Um, I have, that's, that's not a value judgment. I think it has to be whatever works best for the person. And I am just old enough to have uh, discovered keyboards at a young enough age for that to be useful for me. Um, I think they're, you know, I'm right on the border. There are people who are just a little bit older than me who are kind of like, I will always just be the touch typing. Um, or I will always going to be, be doing this. But my, uh, but my process, I, I am not good longhand writing anymore. Uh, it's chicken scratch. It's legible only to me and only no, no. Uh, half the time to me. And it's not fast. I can type. I've been told I type very quickly. You type very quickly. Even by writer standards. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a, like, it, it puts me to sleep now, like, nice, like, <laughs> when they're, like, tapping away, <laughs> and I fall asleep, and it's kind That's of, like, so the gentle awesome. rain, oh, of, yeah, I don't know, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's fast. Oh, it kind of is, though, okay, well, I don't know, well, I don't know what you're typing about, whatever, <laughs> or write about butts, write about it in that rhythm. <laughs> Okay, I I'm have just to go back to work really quick. I'm going to be muting my headset. If I can come back before this is done, I will do so, and I will let you know I'm back. Okay. But, thank you, Tabby. Oh, and then we hope you come back. Hank, the rest of the still be here. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what I'm hoping, but... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I mean, you know, yeah, I, I, I feel confident that I can draw this out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Based on past history. <laughs> okay, still hoping. See yeah, you yeah, in yeah, a please. little bit, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Hi. Um, well, I'm going to move on with a, and I'm, I'm glad because this is for both of you. Uh, Memento Mori 21, Roman numeral 21, has a question for both of you. Which character from Dragon Age can you relate to the most and why? I mean, I already talked about Flemeth getting mad at people. <laughs> <laughs> so that it is kind one. of the gold standard there, Karen. That sort of is, yeah. I kind of relate to different ones depending on my mood. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Flemeth in a way, not like when she's, I'm not as badass as Flemeth. Yeah, there's like who I really am and who is aspirational. Flemeth is aspirational. If I say Solace, I'm going to get in trouble, but... Kind of Solace. I was going to say Solace. <laughs> because Solace is a paradox in some of the, okay, the writers, again, the writers have, to use RuPaul's Drag Race terminology, the writers have read me for filth about <laughs> me saying, like, you don't understand. Solace is, Solace is thoughtful and passionate and he has, he has emotions that he doesn't feel comfortable sharing with people. And then the writers from Without Pause will say that he makes into a giant mural. <laughs> talking about how he's going to betray you on the wall. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, and multiple walls. That's and multiple what I love. walls, yeah. waiting for anyone to ask what they mean. So is like you. <laughs> he does I mean, want like to be asked. Too, it that's an essential well, no, component. Just, what does that mean? Uh, nothing. Yeah, we, we talk about. I don't know if it's a Leo Taurus thing. But like my emotions are, if I have a thought, it's out of my head. If I'm going to be, I'll be grumpy, and then it goes away. Like I have the worst poker face in the world. You always know what's going on, and I think you think you have a good poker face. No, <laughs> I know now. My poker face is terrible, but I will say, no, you don't no, understand. No, it's fine. I'm fine. Nothing. <laughs> It's all right. No. Nice. Nicely done. I know what pain looks in my heart. <laughs> what are you doing? I kind 
I'm identifying with both of these and it's really strange for me right now. Yeah. Um, um, and, and I have to say that my adoration of Flemeth is so huge that I purpose, I, I drink from the well because like, look, I deserve to be a slave to Flemeth. You know, I'm fine with it. I'll do whatever she wants. It's no problem. I'm not worthy. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm in serious trouble going forward, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah. I would love to someday be even a teensy bit as badass as Flemeth. Right. We all um, should aspire to that. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take uh, today's so next question, and then Savvy, you and I will, will like, will alternate on those. Um, okay. Wordy Blurred, which I love that name, is hoping you can both talk about a Dragon Age darling that you had to kill that you still think about. It could be a side quest or maybe just a bit of conversation, but it stuck with you. Okay, so someone who didn't person. no, okay. someone who didn't make it. Okay, I have one. Wait, a person or a plot? A plot. Okay. Yeah, a plot, a bit, something like that. Sure. Okay, so in a very early version, this is okay. This is super random, but in a very early version of Bull's plot, um, in DAI, um, it wasn't just Venatori who are coming after him; it was Fog Warriors. Oh wow! And um, and so there was going to be a plot where you had to go and fight through the fog, and that was going to be. Uh, that was going to be all tricky, and Bull was going to be, Bull was really angry, because he was like, the Fog Warriors, I fought them in Saharan, and I hated them, but I also respected them, because they also fought the Vince. They right. didn't fight anybody, and there was, a, there was an honor in that. And so to see them coming in now and fighting for the Venatori, what the hell? And Bull was really angry. And so you got through and you would you would fight them all and you would, you know, kill the last one and, you know, the fog would clear. And Bull was, was leaning over one of them going, why now? You didn't bow to anyone. You didn't bow to us. You fought for years. Why now? And the fog warrior, you know, mortally wounded, would look up and say, they have our families. <gasps> Oh, and oh and Bull, God. as the and as the guy dies, Bull would look down and say, "Yup, that'd do it," and oh, then would go off no. and kill the snot out of the Venatori to free the Fog Warriors' families, and that would have led to the same you know decision with the Venatori and the Dreadnought ships and stuff. And it was this beat that I really loved. And I remember Luke Christensen saying. Yep, that'd do it. Save that line. Find something to do with that line because it was Bull as, at his most analytical. He can be angry and impassioned, right. but what he can see as a manipulator, oh, yeah, okay, that's the thing that would have turned them. Yeah, silly, I didn't think of that myself earlier. That was Bull in a nutshell. And, you know, it was, I didn't need the Fog Warriors. We didn't have the resources for them. It would have required a lot, well, it did require a lot more explanation and it didn't really make a ton of sense. So it makes sense that they got cut, but right. I do. I did really like that line because it was a really good revelatory line for how Bull's mind works. Yeah, that cold, yeah, he's able to, to, to compartmentalize in that way. Yes, mm -hmm. compartmentalization, that's perfect. Yeah, and, and it also makes the subtext text for Bull. <laughs> because the Chargers is the one thing he can't, you know, his family, yep. if he loses them, that's it. That's um, the lever. So I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> um, and then, uh, well, and, and Karen, I would ask you, uh, from an editing standpoint, did you ever have to cut something that you didn't want to, you know, to cut as an editor, but it had to be done? I was trying to think, because usually by the time I'm getting to like like big decisions about you know plots or this arc or or this conversation um you know i'm not making those kinds of calls I but think you felt pretty broken up when you had to remove the word and from the start of every single sentence yeah that was a tragedy. <laughs> every time that happens it's a huge loss to it seemed to really pain all of the world yeah uh, I, I, that's one of my worst habits everybody hates uh, me for it <laughs> Well, Ryan and I, um, Smokey, but I can't, this is Smokey. Hi. Oh, look. Oh, hi, Smokey. He usually isn't a lab cat, but for some reason in the evenings, he comes down and decides he's a lab cat. So here we are. Oh my gosh, look at him. Yeah, we, um, Ryan and I talk about, we can tell who's written what, like, based on just things like that. Patrick always says, and at the beginning of everything. Um, 
John Dombrow makes questionable punctuation decisions sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I can't really put. I thought it was this good. That's good. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's fair. So yeah, I mean, by the time I if, if there's if I'm gonna have to cut something or I see something that is not working, um, I feel like my job is not to remove it. It's to talk to the writer and figure out how we can make it better. Because mm -hmm. um, usually it's you know there's a point that needs to be made or you know if you, and it's just not coming across. So it's not so much having to cut it as it is having to tweak it so that it's working better. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm for, for all that we joke about the hacking and slashing, there's not, uh, I don't think, yeah, I can't think of anything in particular that I've had mm -hmm. to, to cut. Um, That's fair. Yeah, I mean, you <laughs> have the trauma of the great ideas. <laughs> I just sort of, you don't edit the first draft. The no, first I don't. Draft. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm never sad to take out apostrophes. I gleefully remove apostrophes. Um, I, know. I don't care. Uh, it's for the good of the project. Yeah, sorry, I'm just drawing this out. I, Patrick's answer was better, so you can just skip over mine. No, no, yours is great. This is great. I have a cat. That's my contribution. It, it's a fine contribution. Um, oh, yes. Well, onward to Savvy. Okay. Masery Nine Wonders. Patrick, do you get writer's block? And if so, how do you get around it? <clears throat> um, I have an answer from watching you, but I'm interested <laughs> in what you're going to say. Wow. Okay. I'm kind of more interested. Okay. So I would say I don't. Or, okay, I, there are times when it's like I don't quite know what to write next. Um, usually for me, doing something physical will help. Um, a, way I get, a way I get past writer's block is to try to get myself into the right mood. Um, and getting myself into the right mood is a matter of, um, you know, it's, it's drinking hot chocolate or... Um, lighting a scented candle or something like that, that for me triggers the, oh, that's right, writing happens now, sort of association. Okay. Beyond that, okay, I would yeah. say I mostly just think of myself as just kind of banging on it until something happens, but carrying right. more through. Yeah, well, you have, I think you have two different modes, depending on, because if you're writing for work, that's like you have to get something done by a deadline, and that's really you just sit down and like start moving your fingers, and then eventually it turns on, and you go you go back and, and fix up the stuff in, in, in front. And yeah, when it's your personal stuff, you do more walking around, and, and or you just won't, you know, if you're not yeah. having, cause you, you're, really good about setting like deadlines for yourself. I'm going to write this much or even like for a day, I'm going to write two scenes tonight or I'm going to write yeah. X amount by that time. Um, and so, ow, claws on my leg. <laughs> um, yeah, so it is a little bit different whether it's your own personal thing with not as much deadline or work. Excellent. Um, well, I'm gonna. I'm going to ask a question from Hearts Path Twenty Eight, who wonders, who came up with attacking the building with the goat in, in Inquisition? That was frigging brilliant. Oh my God, was that Luke! I remember. I think that was Luke. It was Luke and. I mean, that was one of those things that came out of like a writer discussion. Well, people were joking about and it. I think a cinematic designer. That would make sense. I can't remember which it's cinematic designer it was. Wait, was it Epler? It sounds like something Epler would do. <laughs> It is one of the great moments of all time, for yeah. sure. Yeah, but Luke, Luke was the writer, I mean, and yeah. it was, but, but I a cinematic was designer was, yeah. I, I think it might have been John Epler making the, making yeah. the goat assault happen. That, that's right. I think Sylvia <laughs> <we're still laughs> talking about it, too. I think Sylvia was iconic. iconic. Yeah, it was And good. Josie just trying to process it with the, you know, thousand-yard scare. Attacking building <laughs> with, with, with a goat. With a goat. <laughs> a goat. <laughs> And then um, Hearts Path also wants to know what character arc in any of the Dragon Ages are you happiest with or most proud of? Soulless. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if I stick the landing. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> don't really have too much to do with art, so. No, I don't know. talk about which one I like the most, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I was happiest I with. Doesn't, doesn't necessarily imply ownership. Yeah, you can just pick one you think. like. I mean, honestly, for me, the one that the one that I love is actually a relationship. It's it's not a one person arc. It's Isabel and Aveline in DA two, which I wasn't on to be yeah. clear. And it was Luke and Cheryl. Yeah. And I love that arc. Yeah. I loved how they started off so antagonistic because yeah. Yeah, both of them, uh, both of them thought the worst of each other because mm -hmm. of how they've been raised. And both of them saw themselves as the type of person you weren't supposed to be. And they both just tore into each other about that. And then eventually grew from that into kind of sisterhood. Yeah. Into nobody, nobody picks on my sister but me. And I just, I really love that because that felt real. It wasn't, yeah. yeah. it didn't feel like movie perfect and now we're buddies forever. But it felt like, like DA2 was very much, again, and I say this as someone who was just a, a fellow player and a fan, but it was very much a story about family. Mm -hmm. And that felt like the kind of messy, imperfect, mm -hmm. but real family love that you get, even found family, that you get in those kind of situations. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Because it still feels, which is great, because it still feels uncomfortable by the end. In a good way, it doesn't feel perfect. Everything's fixed now. They yeah. Still yeah, it's just more like a, a relationship you might actually have with yeah. a family member who you have a hard time getting along with, and yeah. you haven't written, it's written each other off. You're just trying to figure out how to, how to relate to each other. Um, I mean, mine's probably kind of been given, but it's part of why Flemeth is one of my favorite characters. I'm usually not a huge fan of slow burns, but just the way that she progresses from being this crazy old wacky possibly witch lady out in a swamp to <laughs> a dragon goddess <laughs> a goddess um i just i just loved how dave did the development of that i really 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 enjoyed that and getting to see a little more and and uh having her surprise you little bits yeah. along the way oh, yeah. here and there that's part of why i liked her so much is just the way that that unraveled <laughs> oh like a kitty and then you add in the family stuff and the poignance and the emotion yeah. and the, oh my god yeah and her and morgan yeah just yeah and i think some of the, the mother daughter stuff with morgan kills um, me. it just kills me yeah so good well savvy the next one is for you okay embryums must know must know mm -hmm. um if you could take an all expense paid vacation to anywhere in thetis where would you go oh I think we had we answered one similar to this last year and i said vervain because i like the ocean the ocean yeah i remember that yeah vervain is the hawaii of dragon age <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not really wrong hawaii, side but, but you know it's, it... it's warmer oh, it's got that... again right now anywhere that's not my basement oh. I love that. Oh, um, okay. no, I'm kidding. um yeah i'm good with the beach I might like to to go to the mountains though, like in the summertime, if it was like a, a mountain cabin getaway kind of thing. Little Ferelden, and... go hang out with the Avar and just barbarian oh, around nice. the mountains for a while and <laughs> rappel down cliffs and stuff. I could see the point. Of course you could. <laughs> well, because it's... you and your apostrophes can go hang out in the cave. <laughs> Sorry, that's awesome. Uh... The cat and I will be a repelling <laughs> You and the cat we'll, will be on we'll the We'll be hanging out flinging yeah. goats with the animal. <laughs> Enjoy stone bear hole over there. Yeah. As I explore the dimensions of the <laughs> yeah, always... This is all tracking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of the few, the proud, that would be on the storm coast in the middle of the winter going, oh, this is great, you know, so. But I because I like the storm coast because that actually reminds me of, of um, Northern California. I'll let yeah, you know yeah. where we lived for a while, yeah, and there's that about. yeah that kind of foggy. And it's rainy. very Pacific Northwest too. So yeah, yeah. yeah. so I yeah I do I, I dig that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Savvy gets the okay. next question as well. And can I just say because I love Savvy's voice so much, and I just want her to record books for me. So I, I would agree, yes. 
I just love your voice so much, Savvy. Okay, I'm done. Well, bless y'all's heart. <laughs> <laughs> bless your heart, too. Okay. Um, Will, Will Evan Elise, sorry, wonders, what's the most fun you've had writing or editing for the DA universe? Any specific scenes or character arcs? Banter. I would say banter globally. Yeah, on, <laughs> on all the games, banter is, is fun. I, I don't um, even know if it's, I think I, for, uh, Bull and Sarah, Luke and I going back and forth about that, or Bull and Dorian and the bromance. Bull and Dorian and the bromance, that was <laughs> um, I think Mary just kept, uh, when Varric tries to teach cold knock-knock jokes. <laughs> yeah. And every that time I opened the file, Mary had just added another one. <laughs> no, no, there, it's me, Cole. I was like, no, kid, that's not how it goes. <laughs> it, like, it was like, it just kept going. Yeah. I would actually buy the book of that. Just that. Yeah, yeah that would be and, great. Um, and also, not, Isabella, not a lot of Isabella's um, had me just like crying, laughing when I was editing those. Um, the other thing about banter is that banter, it's not more expensive. The only all you're adding by doing a different branch for a specific condition is just adding an additional line of dialogue. We, you don't have to do the additional cinematics. You don't right. have to worry about any kind of tracking. So that's the place where we can put the absurdly specific conditional. <laughs> all I remember was Isabella in DA2, and it was her doing increasingly pointed puns to her uh, innuendos, not even puns. Yeah. Single entendres. Yeah. Apostatus. Apostatus. About there's that, and it's asking, asking Aveline about Donald. Does he? Do they, does he <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I just remember shank your jewelry, and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> I fell out of my chair. <laughs> shank your jewelry. That's. You can't say that. But I think Luke was like, "We're checks to see whether you're important." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> okay, this is good. Um, let's see. The next one I have exhales. Ogren. I know people don't like Ogren, but I liked Ogren's <laughs> commentary on things. No, Ogren was fun. I thought I, I enjoyed him more in Awakenings for some reason. Yeah. And I don't. Hmm. I guess he wasn't as sad to me. In a way, yeah. he seemed kind of like the happiest person there. Yeah, he, yeah. he yeah, he had some growth by then. Yeah. Sorry, um, let's see. No, no, that's a good one. Um, X Pale's intriguingly fun question is: If you could choose one Dragon Age character as a coworker at Bioware, who would it be, and what Not kinds of powers would you give I, them? Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely wouldn't be Solus. <laughs> It seems like there are some scheduling issues. I've resolved them. <laughs> it would I'm be going very to tear down the veil. <laughs> Actually, that doesn't sound so bad. Like, wait, I don't see how that helps our production schedules. <laughs> uh, well, I want to say, no, like, I was going to say Aveline, because she gets shit done. Oh, yeah, okay, Aveline and Bolt together. Would have people, yeah, like the two of them, they would have people organized. Hey, how are you doing on those deadlines? Yeah. <laughs> like, Isabella would be fun to work with, but we get nothing done. Oh, no, like, nothing, would, nothing would ever get Also, get we finished. work with Cheryl. We already almost kind of almost work with Isabella. That's true. Um, <laughs> who else? I would like to point Vivienne at certain people. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> you could aim her like a weapon. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Just like, can you go talk to this person for me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a good one. She would be good. Um, you have the additional resources you need and the gift <laughs> basket. <laughs> <laughs> Meredith. Meredith could be good in certain situations. There we go. Yeah, it sort of depends on, on the situation. Yeah, like there are people who would be entertaining to work with and a lot of fun, and then right. other people who would actually help just get fun. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, I think I'm good with that, right. Elaine. I want to say almost win, too, because win has that win has a good no nonsense, no nonsense kind yeah. of, all right, everyone stop being so dramatic. And win would be good when, when things got punchy and that late, we're worried about the schedule. Yeah. Some of us are crunchy and the headlines are tough. Yeah, win would yeah. be, win would be, win good, would be good at that, I think. I can see that. 
And then uh, Xpale also has a serious question. Okay. What is the one thing about the gaming industry that you would change to make your jobs easier or more enjoyable? Uh, okay. I would, if uh, I would, in the world in which I have the time machine or unlimited power to do this, mm -hmm. I would have flipped the script or stopped whatever happened in the 80s to where it went from being um, relatively egalitarian with as many female developers as male to mm -hmm. being somehow coded as being all for guys. Um, because that gave us a good 15 to 20 year stretch of almost all guys in the mm -hmm. office and specifically almost all white guys. And that has led to a lot of difficulties in communication that makes it, um, mm -hmm. we are still figuring out how to learn different communication styles and how to learn not to talk over other people, how to, to learn how to not have the winner of the conversation be the person who talked the loudest. And I don't think necessarily everything would be perfect if we hadn't had that, uh, that, that switch away from the, the King's Quest kind of era. But, you know, I'd love to Mine kind of, I think, dovetails with that. Um, there <clears throat> were, I think, a lot of games early on as technology was being developed that were made by people who were excited and passionate about the technology and the ideas and wanted to do it because it was fun and it was cool. It was something they enjoyed doing. And so they were a lot of young people who didn't necessarily have a lot of life responsibilities yet. I'm obviously speaking very globally. And, and generalizations. Um, but so you would stay up all night and make a game because it was cool and it was fun and it was exciting. And then that kind of started becoming more professional, more professional, turning into a job that you did. And that set up yeah. the expectation of and the culture of just, you know, working all the time and that sort of being the most important thing. And unfortunately, it set up an expectation of schedules and you know you could start working on a game at x time of this size and release it at x time and um you know there are probably some unreasonable uh personnel requirements of how much people can could work to you know would be working to make something like that happen mm -hmm. and so as the industry has grown up a little bit um, it's really been a challenge and especially as technology expands and gets more expensive and, you know, does a lot more, uh, but changes a lot. And, um, yeah, I just think this, the industry got set up in a way that these scheduling expectations are now, well, that's how we did it before. So let's do it this time and how right. we before may not have been the healthiest way to do it. So as it grew out of tech instead of growing out of theater. Yeah. That's an interesting way of, of putting that, yeah. How did you put that? Can you say that again, Patrick? The, that video games grew out of tech. Video games grew out of, video games were a branch of computer programming mm -hmm. is where they got their start. And that really, that really thrived on the, uh, we're going to crunch, we're going to do this, as opposed to growing out of theater. And theater, yeah. people still work ridiculous late hours in theater, but there is a slightly different attitude. Yeah, well, and it's more of a balance, and it um, that makes sense. Yeah, but hey. that's a really insightful way of putting it. Well done. Well, and especially because we're talking about in in this specific sense, RPGs. We're talking about role playing, mm -hmm. and that's directly harkens back to theater and improv, and you know. Yeah. Um. um yeah. That. Thank you. Th those are great. Um, I'm gonna take. Today says next question because I'm so excited by the way that I get this one. <laughs> Sorry, Teresa. Um, Zeb Strico or Zeb Strico is pondering the question of what is Varick's favorite Carly Rae Jepsen song? The cat and I will just sit and wait for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Go into my playlist. <laughs> it is extensive. Because it's on the 
I see. I see Varric as liking it's it's I mean it's obviously her early works. The did the later disco infused stuff is solid, but uh, the cover of Joni Mitchell's Clouds. Yeah, yeah, which is really good, by the way. Yeah. It is really good. I love that. Both sides now is that esoteric? Yeah. Okay. Both sides okay. now is you, but yeah, it's called. Clouds. Oh, both sides now, right? Yes, you're right. I wasn't sure. I was okay. just checking. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. I said. Oh, that backwards. oh. What about Verica? Okay, for Vera. Okay, if you're thinking that's not Verica enough. Um, I don't know. I, it was just talk to me. Okay. Yeah, I can see. Talk to me. Yeah. Because that 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 opens with a story. Every morning. Yeah. You're walking by. Yeah. Same me look. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bonus points if you want to point out any other character's favorite Carly Rae Jepsen songs. Well, I was starting to think. I was trying to think of what his favorite ABBA song would be. <laughs> oh, please! You got to do it. Come on. We we. Yeah, it's only there, fair. There's um, always room for ABBA. ABBA or Queen. It's your choice. Yeah. She's been on a Queen kick. I have been. That's the other thing. I almost mentioned it when you're asking about songs, because like Queen, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a deep lore Queen fan, and <laughs> it's been like my happy place to go to when I'm stressed out and the world is terrible. So I've been watching a lot of like documentaries that I've seen a thousand times and re-listening to all the songs. Um, well, and the live performances were always better. The live performances were just yes, it was so good. Um, okay, so we can do both, but. I was starting with Abbott and now you've distracted me. I was gonna say money, 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 but um, I don't know. You stumped the band. No, the band is thinking. Well, what do you think? I don't listen to Abbott. I listen to Infidel. real music. I'm kind of. <laughs> oh, I'm, I can't believe you said, Patrick, you were on my shit list for that one. Um, I would say for, for Abba, I would suggest possibly Voulez Vous for Bull. So it might be a. Oh, yeah. That yeah. works. That works. Yeah, okay. And like the winner takes it all, maybe for. Oh. I'm kind of waffling. Uh, kind of could go with Solace. Yeah. A little bit. Or Vivian. Yes, very much so. Like from the, but from a different stamp. Yeah, completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From yeah, a different yeah. stamp. Yeah, but I guess so, because it's like, it's actually the losing yeah. song. So. <sighs> yeah, I think I might go with money, money, money for Varric, though. Okay. That's a good one for Varric. Okay, Queen. Anything with. Okay, queen? so Queen. Who so, so for which character? For anybody, any of them. Just, just match someone up. Just pick anybody you want. I mean, We Are the Champions is obviously Solace. <laughs> <laughs> Princes of the Universe. Princes of the Universe is also valid. That's a good one. Um, you want for Beric, who wants to live forever? Oh, that's <laughs> a good one. Guess who's back? Welcome back! Yay! 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 Now has reached the paperwork part of my day. <laughs> Yay. I can cut and paste to do that. <laughs> We're just talking about, uh, uh, we got a Carly Rae Jepsen question, and now we've segued into Queen and Ava picks for the, for the companions. Oh, like matching okay. up what, what songs yeah. go with what people. Um, I'm going to have to object. You said Solace was Who Wants to Live Forever? Or mm -hmm. Varric. Princess of the Universe, yeah. And obviously for Solace, it's going to be fat-bottomed girls. He grabs their butt in every <laughs> single... <laughs> That's a good one. I am so glad I came in, back at this point. That's a good one. Well, I was going to say Fat Bottom Girls for Harding because she's got a cute butt. I mean, but. they can share. We can't do too much about her Nobody understood what you said. That's good. It's probably for the best. They just rhymed <laughs> villain and melon, and I, I don't think you're... Villain. Oh, I'm sorry. I love villain and melon. Sorry. Oh, that's good. That's that's my right. God. <laughs> nope. Lost forever. We could just cut them right out. Okay. Rewrite fat bottomed girls for Dragon Age challenge. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it. I could do it. I'm a lyricist. I could do it. Yeah. I could do it. Um, I think somebody to love would be really good for Dorian. Oh yeah. yeah that would be very good for Dorian. Um. 
I was going to say the show must go on for Beric, but. Ooh. Ooh, that's good. Um, free for Bull. What's that? Break free for Bull. Oh, yeah, I want to break that's free. That's good. That's a good yeah. one. I like that one. Yeah. I'm so glad T came back because <laughs> these are better than mine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just, I feel like I feel I've like been on a queen kick. I, what can I me say? Too. Yeah, me well, too. I was gonna say like I'm a I'm a deep lore queen fan, and it's been like returning to my happy place when I'm like stressed out during everything in the past year. I just like put on my headphones and well, and it's not, and it's not quite officially queen, I think. But um, I I have a weakness for under pressure. Um, I basically yeah. could, if like it's if I could listen to one song the rest of my life, that would be that's a good one. It. So, yeah. Who well, uses that Millie Vanilli beat, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think you mean Vanilla Ice. I don't know. Ice, no. I don't know. No. No. I was say say how many degrees of separation I could do it and still? <laughs> ice Ice Baby does not exist in my universe. It is not a thing. <laughs> Point that out. <laughs> I held. I knew what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, the best part. Obviously, Sarah's has to be another one bites the dust. Yeah, that makes oh, sense. Yeah. That's a good I one. I was going to say, Bohemian Rhapsody for Cole just is so weird and all over Just the because, place. right? Yeah, yeah. actually, that yeah. would be yeah. fake. <laughs> yeah, that would be really good. Um, Okay, I could literally do this for the next yeah. four hours. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we can get up more and we can throw them, you can just throw them out there as you, as yeah, we I'll just randomly as I, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, um, uh, we are, today, so we are about a uh, little past halfway. We're doing okay. good, guys. We're doing good. Woohoo! Everybody, we are three hours in. <laughs> three hours. We got oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no. It's our it's, fault. We get yapping about it. We're at Savvy's uh, Hugh Mines question, if that All helps. Right. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Humans wonders, after her encounter with Solus in Inquisition, was Flemeth's status left ambiguous by design? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Good question. Sure Thank you. It was. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> And uh, Humans also wanted to know, would you be interested in working on another browser game like The Last Court? Totally. One of the things that I, you know, I love working on the games that we get to work on. I think those are awesome, but there are times when I miss, uh, I miss the kind of small team atmosphere, being able to work on smaller games and go, great, you're not necessarily making a giant planet or an entire country. Just use something we already have and yeah. do something, do something small and fun that is set in uh the dinner and market or yeah. something like that I, I think that would be a lot of fun it isn't epic and doesn't have yeah. to take 15 hours of uh, well and that was kind of the vibe i think when you all were working on the defender knights tray but that was you know it's just a fun smaller focused thing yeah. that didn't require quite so much planning and coordination and there's just kind of a yeah we can all just tell our our, fun our story. tell our pulp slice of life yeah. story well, in the last excited and traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> and the last court kind of felt like a little bit like uh, playing the war table, you know, mm, just yeah. little bits. I and I love the war table. I'm so weird, but I love it. And no, that's so weird. I enjoyed it. So. We all like different things. That is the whole point of having big games with many things, is because we all like different stuff. So it makes it feel like a real, you know, panorama to me. It feels big. So. Okay, well, oh, I happen to have the next question. Um, uh, Sagittarius Slut, uh, I, I say that, that's their name, wants to know. <laughs> that's a great name. No blaming, you know, I'm not, yeah, it, you know. Uh, wants to know, the writers have always known more about Solus's character than the fans. <clears throat> now that he's such an iconic character, Patrick, what was the process of writing to Vinter Knights, and specifically your approach to the Dread Wolf Take You? <laughs> Okay, so with the I love that that makes you laugh. <laughs> well, I don't okay because I don't want to burst any bubbles, but it's I had fun with it because I think uh, okay, so I have a personal website, and the title of my personal website is "Absurd Premise Executed Faithfully." <laughs> uh, it's a great and it's great. It's a great great place. I've been over there. It's and. 
It's so, the recipe's there. <laughs> so I don't want anyone, yeah, I don't want anyone to feel like I'm not taking it seriously, but my, what I, to write the Dread Wolf Take You, I went, my, my very deep thought, pro, thoughtful process was, you know, that Batman episode was super cool. That one I watched <laughs> when I was a kid where it was told from the point of view of all the Batman villains being in a bar to talk about how they almost got Batman that one time. And then the twist is Batman is there. Yeah. What if I did that with Solus? And that was kind of where that started. And I feel bad because then people think I'm much more thoughtful than I actually am as opposed to going to Batman and going like, yeah, okay, I'm going to do that. And then just an absurd have premise executed. Yeah, absurd premise. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, that's what you said. I mean, but, you know, the, the, there's never been, you know, there's one original story that's ever been told ever. You know, I mean, so everything borrows from everything. And, and I think within geek culture specifically, there's so many, you know, thing, fandoms and, and awesome things that we're all watching. And I think it's really fun when they weave together. And I think... I don't know. I first thought you were all getting kicked out. So I had fun. I had fun doing that. And I liked, so I said, okay, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to mix that up with a little bit of kind of a Rashomon style. Um, yeah. They're telling their, each person is telling their story, but to make it more interesting than just the Batman thing, everyone is lying. Right. And so if there's a little bit of a puzzle box thing in there. And I kind of, I gave everyone a tell and because it was not, you know, because it was just written and not audible, you know, I had everyone over explain the part where they lied a little <laughs> bit more. They, everyone, yeah, everyone had a little kind of a, everyone had a tick where it went like two extra lines going, now that might seem weird how the arrows came in and caught this guy in the throat. And not me. Around. And not me, but you know, just lucky, I guess. And... <laughs> You know, so okay, everyone's gonna lie, and Charter will, and 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 the fellow spies will be catching that, and Charter, meanwhile, will be catching Solus in the lies. So here are the three little things. Here are the three mistakes I will have him drop in, and Charter will catch those. Right. And I, I will try to be fair about it as well, so that the readers who are reading along with, I noticed he never took a sip of the tea. You mentioned the tea and then he never had it, aha. So that a few readers will have figured right. it out and to feel very, very smart. And other ones will go, oh my gosh, that's awesome. So I don't know. You got I to have fun, fun with it. it. I just oh, wanted sorry. to have fun with it. It was, it was the kind of plot I could almost definitely not have done in a video game. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to go like, let me do, let's, let me do a ridiculous noir liars telling stories to liars story with my, with my elf in a wig that I did not realize was going <laughs> to seem quite that ridiculous until everyone else did it and was like, well, yes, I mean, of course, the dragon mask had to match. He's an Orlesian bard. It would have been out of character if it didn't match. And then people drew it. And I was like, well, okay, yes, it's a little bit... <laughs> Over the top, baby. He lived as a god for a while. Right. <laughs> yeah. So he has standards. That's right. He's used to opulence and decadence. Yeah, absolutely. And overblown. He's just turned his back on them because he's humble. <laughs> He just, so he just spent like two plus years dressed like an apostate hobo. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, and, and then apostate finally, hobo. Yeah. Okay, but Karen got something. Oh, we're, just, we're talking about being a god. Flemish song would totally be Killer Queen. <gasps> oh, there yes. we go. Good one. Good. Also, Patrick, I have to shout out to my friend Snark Knight, uh, Pat, who is our, our DA RPG DM, because when I was reading to Venture Nights and I was working on my blog post about Dreadwolf Take You, Patrick was like, uh, the other Patrick, Pat was like, oh, it's Batman. And I was like, no, it's not. It's not Batman. He's like, it's Batman in the best way. He was really excited. Like he knew exactly what you were doing. So. Hello. The dog is back. Having totally, I've just been the having a little us. bit of yeah, <laughs> angst watching him slowly destroy the free time behind us. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, he said this is the highest compliment, not like with derision. He was so thrilled to recognize it. So, <laughs> but that's like the geek thing. 
it's so fun when you recognize somebody else go i watched that too i know what you're doing there that's so fun oh, he sent me off to go find it and watch it myself it was an order so. <laughs> and it is out there that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> okay it's my turn i think yep JB underscore one 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 two has oh, a question for Patrick. We're, we're at Mother Muchie. Uh, wait, Mother Muchie. Okay, Aww. I skipped because oh. I, I skipped to Sagittarius slut second question. Yes, Sagittarius slut got around. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Mother Muchie would like to know, this holiday season, can we send you guys gifts? I know it's probably not as simple given the nature of game dev and your privacy, but I'd love to send you guys some cool stuff that I think you might like. Aww. That is so nice. sweet. Um, yeah, we're not allowed to go to the office, so that's a little weird. <laughs> um, like you know, I set up a P.O. box. <laughs> Maybe. Can we get back to you on that one? Yeah. You know, you guys should set up like a Christmas P like P.O. box at Bioware for us to inspire you, and we'll all send you just goofy things. You can even Such have a gifts for everyone. Yeah, and there's a spending limit. That. Yeah. that would be fun. I wonder, it would be cool. Like, okay, now I'm having like a secret santa kind of thought but no like if we could do a, a like do it online like you know people take pictures of the cool stuff that they drew or the cool things that they're making and if we could somehow like have both us and you know the devs and the fans oh. and i don't know somewhere we could all like repository cool stuff like that that might be kind of fun so then everyone could see it oh, i love that maybe that would require more thought than I have right now, but maybe we can talk. We about should think, yeah, please think about it further, and maybe we can even me. work yeah. charity into it in some way or oh, something. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. But that, regardless of what shakes down, that is a really kind thought, and I really appreciate you asking that. That means a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Unfortunately, sanity doesn't come in a box. <laughs> oh, that it did. <laughs> or like in pills or something I can stir into my wine. That would be great. <laughs> Karen, you're a woman after my own heart. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Boozy hot chocolate, all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Gutsa251's question is, I know you've considered making a DA tactics game, but have you also considered making a grand strategy game like those made by Paradox Interactive? And do you plan to take us beyond Thetis at some point? Ooh. So I think we, we touched on the strategy one. A yeah, we did. Bit yeah, we, we said talked about that earlier. How bad we are. <laughs> how bad I put yeah, We are really bad people company, to be asking that. Because I'm sure there are any number of people who would go, yes, I desperately want to do that. I'd be like, no, I don't want any more ways to fail at games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But going beyond Thetis, I really like that idea. I would love to see what's yeah. across the sea. I would love to. Yeah. I would love to go further north. I'd love to see what the canary we're leaving behind. I'd like to yes, see what the other side. I've always wanted side. to see that. Like, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Going to expound upon yep. that. Well, now you really idea? have me wanting to know what the executors are all about. Me so. too. <laughs> so much. So much. Those. Are, yeah. I'm. Can more beefcake lords of fortune please thank you <laughs> that, that is a bug i can file yes <laughs> um okay so uh sagittarius slut our our favorite slut of all had a second interesting question wondering what it was like up with the pearl. <laughs> yeah you know and uh, they wanted to the her they wanted to know what it was like working on descent and what approach did you take when it came to the deep roads? As typically players often dread them, so did the team try to flip that impression or response? Hello. Hi. I'm sorry. Look at that. Oh my God. So Descent was um, mostly worked on by a team of folks in the Austin studio. Okay. So, uh, you know, we sort of contributed a little, but they're the ones who did most of that work. 
And I, so gorgeous, by the way. Yeah, I yeah. Think, and I think what they really brought to it was because they're the team who had worked so much on the Old Republic, mm -hmm. and they really understood. Wow, think I was expositing. What are you, what is the hound is going off script? Um, <laughs> but they are so they were so good at setting up interesting encounters and you know creating new combat scripts so that it didn't feel super repetitive. It felt you know interested, interesting and varied with uh, you know a lot of different types of fights. And I really, you know, I really liked what they did. I thought it was a lot of fun as a, a nice change of pace that offered a really good challenging dungeon hack, even for the people who had used the crafting system to get all kinds of guard on hit items and make themselves virtually <laughs> indestructible through a lot of the rest of the game. And I did feel like the design was almost sort of what we were talking about with, you know, sort of expanding out a little bit. Um, you know, in doing something a little different than we had been doing. And so I thought it was really fun that it was a neat, um, you know, not a risk makes it sound too dramatic, but you know, it was, no, it was moving it was. in a direction was... that we don't always. And I, yeah, I thought it was neat. I, I mean, I, I love everything about it. I mean, I would say that it's high praise for me to go, people are always asking which, DLC, which DLCs are essential. And of course, I'm always going to say, for instance, Trespasser, because it's a big old Valentine from Solus <laughs> to us, I'm just saying. But at the same time, you know, Descent is so gorgeous and, and also Jaws of Hacken, I mean, equally. Um, yeah, just, just named all the DLCs. But, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're they are. I are. enjoyed working on the Descent because I got to work with uh, Courtney and um, Katie on the Nug King thing. <laughs> that was, Yay! That was so fun. I mean, that was all them. That was, you know, they, they, that was their, their brainchild. Oh, but it's so I, good. Oh gosh, I, that was fun to work on. I think we all felt very judged in a very good way. Very oh, yes. We, oh, did. Yes. we did feel judged. I am, I am, I am found wanting in many ways and I'm okay with that. Oh, and I love the leap of faith that is, it's, it's Last Crusade. The Last Crusade yes. leap of faith. Yes. I was just, are. yeah. Oh man. I was just be judging you. Yeah. And. Well, and I also thought that what the descent did beautifully visually, um, uh, I'm waving at the golden nug, and I'm not even on video. Okay, um, <laughs> but what I also really liked was that you know how the deep roads Aww. was sort of claustrophobic before, and that was what you got when you got the deep roads, and Inquisition opened that idea up to these vast, really beautiful ancient spaces, and then descent just said, "Oh, I can raise you. I'll take that, and I'll raise you one." And you have underground oceans that are insanely yeah. gorgeous and vaulted ceilings and all these places it just really and then you add in characters that we love i mean i love them you know and um mm -hmm. ren and valto yeah. yeah yes yeah They're i love them fun. both so yeah kudos to everybody on that i wanted to romance them both but <laughs> <laughs> that's well, not happening <laughs> that's what fan fiction is for <laughs> exactly <That> is great. <laughs> <laughs> That's what fan fiction is for. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, you know. We don't have the budget to do all the romances that could potentially be there. Especially uh, in, in the fandoms. Yeah. Because we, we, we ship everyone with everything. So oh, yeah. <laughs> Give me the tree. Give me a dragon. I was just gonna I we, yep. <laughs> somebody <laughs> ships the Nug King with somebody. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Nug King Obviously. Nug King and the actual yeah. golden nug together yes. in Nug Heaven. <laughs> and were we talking about the Dragon Age fandom being thirsty at some point? Oh, yeah. I, 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 I do any, know. Really, there's any, any number of occasions. Yes, that's true. Uh, I know Patrick has retweeted an X all the Y meme that I made about us. <laughs> 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 Which is bang all the things. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're Ace or Aero, then it's cuddle or handshake all the things. There we go. Yeah. I support all of the choices. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Next question. Now it's JB underscore one 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 two turn. Okay, Patrick, did you have any issues or emotions with how your book characters ended up turning out in the game? For example, Briala, Selim. That's a good question. That um, is a good question. I've never heard you talk about that before. So I think issues makes it sound like something didn't work or something was disappointing. When you look at, um, I think Gaspard comes off less sympathetic 
in the game than he does in the book. In the book, mm -hmm. he's definitely, you know, a little bit like Logan. He's definitely the champion that uh, he believes Orle needs. And he's, when I wrote that, some of his machinations in Halamtral were a little bit more complex, but Halamtral wasn't hurting for things that were complex. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it got a little bit simpler mm -hmm. and... <laughs> um, so you know in, in much the same way that I you know so I wish that had uh, come out a little bit better but that doesn't mean it was done badly in the game it was just like no, oh, yeah. I, I wish I'd known how the game was going to do it I could have written to that a little bit better um, oh, and but no beyond that I, I actually I like the contrast because I think sometimes you know people who play the game go um oh, I'm never getting Celine and Briella together, or I'm definitely getting both Celine and Briella together. And then they read this, then they read the novel and they have a different opinion. And right. either way, I think that's cool because yeah. that, that illustrates that, yes, knowing more is going to give you a different perspective on things. And that's a good thing to learn. Yeah, see, the characters in different from my perspective, eyes. having played Wicked Eyes, Wicked Hearts before reading The Masked Empire, for me, Gaspard comes off a lot more sympathetic because you don't know all the things he's done, especially if you're a person who always plays, as my uh, profile picture shows, elves. And that changed a lot, especially learning about the Chevalier um, graduation ceremony, shall yeah. we call it, and knowing this is a guy who's been a Chevalier for, what, 50-some-odd years at this point? <laughs> but people don't realize how old Gaspard is. That's the other thing. Yeah. yeah, kind of an old part. Yeah. He's yeah. pushing and, 70. See, that one, was, that one was funny, and I've gotten, I got some pushback on that. They... People, you know, and even people in the writers' room say, like, did you have to say that the Chevaliers went and they went and all the Chevaliers did that as a rite of passage? Because it makes the Chevaliers really unlikable. And that's the point. <laughs> and I was like, it's also, I I didn't base it on nothing. <laughs> I didn't that didn't just spring out of my head fully formed like Athena from the head of Zeus. That was <laughs> I was I can't remember if I was looking at samurai traditions or some of the some of the knightly orders, but that's that's well, that, what those guys did was they yeah. said we're gonna put you in the poor part of town and that's your final test is your willingness to kill people and it's unpleasant and you know. Right. A lot of people what? don't realize that the chivalric traditions only applied to knights and higher. If you're a peasant out in a field with a pitchfork, you didn't get squat basically yeah yeah well one thing that i thought was interesting with gaspard was um i i i thought he was really kind of a, a fun character in the book and my first playthrough um uh first couple i i had never really gone off the beaten path so i never killed celine i'm always trying to like be nice be good romance bull that, that all i cared about was you know I'm getting happy. yeah I'm bull to show up so, <laughs> so i completely missed a lot of the subtext so it was really fun to do some of the other you know the the roads diverge in the wood and kill celine and set briala up and then you really do get the subtext from gaspard that becomes just a rant, you know, a racist rant of fury. And I was like, oh God, I used to like you, you know, and you didn't realize how bad he actually was in the game, you know, and you get the little hints that he's hunted rabbits, you know, quote, quote, but mm. it's even worse when he just loses his temper at the end. And I love that I'd never seen that, you know, you don't know unless you pick certain things. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I always play elves too. So <laughs> if I can, if I unless I'm blogging about it, okay. Okay, shall we move on? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's definitely. a horrible thing. <laughs> and I'm, horrible. it's really bad. I'm a horrible person. This shows you how horrible a person I. I still think I'm Queen Song. <laughs> <laughs> And it flashed in my head that Carver and Bethany song would be tie your mother down. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yes, it would. I'm so bad. I'm sorry. Wow. Really? 
as a mother, I say that. <clears throat> Sorry. I have to adjust. All right, I'm just, I'm, I'm working with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my whole worldview has realigned. Well, you know. <laughs> it makes sense. It just pops into my head. <laughs> I like our grumpy little bro. I just never thought of him that way. <laughs> okay. It's because she dies. Like, does she? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Um, Poor Sally. <laughs> moving on. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Please. I'm sorry. Thank you for being the voice of reason, Savvy. <laughs> Astria Age wants to know if you had to physically trade places with any of the Dragon Age protagonists, Warden, Hawk, or Inquisitor, whose shoes would you like to be in and why? Wow. Hmm. I mean, the Inquisitor gets pooped on less than all of our other Dragon Age protagonists. <laughs> Literally or figuratively? Well, till a certain yes. appendage. Yes. <laughs> I mean, a certain appendage goes more of the Inquisitor's family survives? Yeah. Not necessarily. <laughs> Okay, listen, those war table operations <laughs> were my bad, and I apologize. No, I loved uh, it, actually. I loved it. I'm you're weird. a terrible person. At least you own it. Yeah, I try. I think because you can pick, it could be any number of people, and I like, and I mean, yeah, you're kind of screwed, but at least you could, you know, be who you are who you want to be when you're getting kind of screwed. Okay. That works. I'll be right back. My cats are on my desk asking for supper. So I'm going <laughs> to go feed them before they can. They understand. Before they eat yeah, you. Yeah, we say feed them before they eat me. Yeah, we say a lot. Bonus points if you leave the mic on while you feed them. Okay. <laughs> no. No, we <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised my young lady hasn't started screaming the screams <laughs> yeah it is becoming the witching hour for cat feeding. oh yeah yeah <laughs> batty just fell off the bed so she's about to go eat something so you know um <laughs> as she does um uh well i'll um uh let's see um did did both of you answer which uh we got which protagonist you would be yeah i'd be yeah. the visitor and i would i would be Whoever. Hero for Hero for <laughs> Yeah, I know. I was trying to remember everyone's last name. Sorry, I was getting to. Oh, sorry. Like, no, I'm not. I don't, I don't, I don't go Trevelyan. I'm just, yeah, sorry. I, I can't was, remember all the origins, but I, I remember. I know. That's why I was looking at you with a blank face. So, yes, sorry. let's just go with Hero for <laughs> Okay. There's Braska. There's Kuzland. There's yeah. Amel. There's. Uh... I think Braska. I'm going to go with Braska. Yeah. Yeah, there's Serana. There's a Dukin and Mahariel. Well, I'm ashamed. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> no, nicely done there, T. Very nicely done. That was that was gorgeous. Okay. And I would say Inquisitor because even though you lose the arm, big deal. You can have Dagna build you a new one, and it'll That's probably true. shoot fire, even probably. if you're not a mage. That's a good point. <laughs> that is a good point. I just like the Inky's journey because um, you start with a blank slate, so you build a character yourself. Yeah. I'm just in love with building a character myself. Like, to me, millions of people can play the game, but my Inquisitor is mine. Nobody yeah. else will play my Inquisitor. And yep. that's why I love that. Um, so I'm going to move forward with a question from Mina Conte, who wonders, Patrick, I'm back. welcome back. <laughs> How are the kitty cats? Is kitty cat happy? Oh, they're fed. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> They're assuaged oh. for the moment. Yeah, for the Mina moment. Conte wonders, Patrick, you mentioned a few years ago that Solus was meant to say more lines to the Inquisitor on the Well of Sorrows, but due to some reasons, uh, I, they were never recorded, I'm assuming like budget or something. Is this why Solus says, I begged you not to drink from the well back in Skyhold, even though we didn't see that moment? Yeah. So the Inquisitor was talking too much. Inquisitor was talking a lot. There were yeah, it was I would say that one comes down to scripting issues and also um that was a disconnect between the writer of Solus, that doofus, and uh <laughs> 
and the writer of Temple of Mythal, I didn't have exactly which way Solas would push you right. And so, yes, we ended up with the error state in which Solas disapproves both ways. Although, honestly, I, really an error state, I, love that, I love that the fandom yeah. largely made that fit Solas's personality. <laughs> True! He is a contrary uh, beast. Well, and because, because, yes, in a way that is very perfectly Solas, that is, okay, Solas, someone has to do this thing. Should it be me? No. Should it be someone else? Well, how could you let it be someone else? It's right, like, right, exactly. Hey, That's what I love that. about it. <laughs> I love like, that about it. Not that I only write one character, but had to be me, someone else might have gotten it wrong. <laughs> oh, it's, damn like, it. <laughs> it's in there somewhere for him. It's like, no, 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 I can't. Somebody cry I can't be the one to solve this hair. problem. I'm, I'm so unequal to the task. It's such a hard problem. Okay, well, no. someone else will solve it. No, 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 not that. <laughs> no, 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 I'll do it if I have to. I just want everyone to know that I didn't want to do it. It just <laughs> happened. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, I see why this question was given to me. I know, Angela. You, you love me so oh, much. Yeah. Now. This is one of those points where I'm glad I don't have a webcam, so you can't see how red I'm turning while I ask this. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited about whatever this is. <laughs> Real Low Fennell asks, did you ever consider in the Solas Ranomance having them consummating their love and then Solas having to find out he has a child in DA4? Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just right off the bat, I'm going to go, I remember you guys talking about removing the actual fade to black scene because of uh, consent issues. I can only imagine how much... How much a child would have added? <laughs> yeah. Boy. Boy, howdy. That would, have added, <laughs> that would have added a lot. The problem with the child thing is that the child thing is, <clears throat> is difficult to do. It's difficult to give the player that kind of choice within the context of the story, because there are some people who absolutely want the angst of, we shared a moment of passion, and now he has a child, and he doesn't know about the child, and they can never be together, and that's so sad, I have to raise a child. And there are other people who, for whom that would totally ruin the relationship, and they would hate that. And so if you're going to do something like that, you really need to signpost it. And we don't have a good way to signpost it. In addition to us not having really great ways to make babies that don't look like animatronic monsters <laughs> when your backs are turned. Yeah, it is. It is yeah, there's you know, the technical side of that. It is amazingly difficult to get child-sized Creatures into the game. You guys did a really nice yeah. job with Kieran, though. He's lovely, by the way. Yeah, and that was like a thing. That was, that was a thing. Yeah. But otherwise, you end up with the Renesmee paradox. Well, we can make, yeah, we can make Kieran, and we can make a child who gets blown up getting into a shuttlecraft, but that's about it. Um, I will say, though, on the considering or, the fake black option, one who gets to see a sword up close real soon. <laughs> that's from oh, that's origins a, that's whoever wrote line. that one is just that line was beautiful an evil person <laughs> i can't i don't know who wrote it i can't remember <laughs> i will say on the on the solus front though there was a version that yes before we took out uh the night of passion with solus um i think one of my best uh <clears throat> one of my best rants i never got to share pre-release was mm -hmm. In that, in that first draft version, you and Solus share a night of passion, and then Solus, you wake up and Solus is trying to leave. Uh, not, to, not to leave the party, but he's trying to leave because he's realized he's made a terrible mistake, and you get to have an angstful conversation about it. And the problem, among the other problems of, you know, of consent and all of that, was also having uh, Cheryl having written Blackwall, and at one point, I had we right. 
At one point I had a, not an actual angry, but a kind of, this is the writers ranting to each other because it's late and we're all a little bit tired going, wait a minute, Blackwall, Tom Rainier, not actually even a Grey Warden, is able to sneak off and do the walk of shame successfully. But the dread wolf Fen Harrell, <laughs> elven trickster god, thousands of years old, cannot sneak off <laughs> while his girlfriend is asleep, but fate Grey Warden guy can. Well, if fate Grey Warden wears, wears heavy armor, that makes it even better. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just going to get you something from the thing. <laughs> and, yes. <laughs> so, yes, it was good because those two scenes were far too close to each other. It was good that we ended up leaving that for a number of reasons, but that among them. Well, I like the fact that we that you gave us both versions in a way. I like the way it is now because I like arguing <clears throat> for and against sex, you know, with the, you know whether or not they had sex, because I like, you know, T and I are opposite sides of the fence on this. I am a no sex occur girl. T is. Uh, let's say uh, wrote him like a Kentucky Derby contestant. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. Um, it escalated quickly. It did. <laughs> This is because you're catching the very end of the escalation of the hours yeah. and hours that Anne and I have had discussions <laughs> about this. Fair. We can't change each other's mind either. No. And, and again, it's the, you have a blank slate character. My character, Fenlath, is certainly not her character. So, of course, the way things would end up differently. You never have the same cool. relationship I mean, yeah. twice. That's that both of your stories are right is kind of cool. Yeah. I, I love that so great. much. You guys, yeah, did something really special when you did that. So yes, I love having that. him phrase things so that it can be taken those two different ways, like supporting. Oh. Yes, we never slept together or saying yes, we slept together, but I wasn't lying to you when I said I loved you. Amazing. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna. Why? I'm just gonna be quiet. <laughs> you're just. <laughs> but also, you're a terrible work person, but I love you. <laughs> fair. Oh, fair. Yes, this is why I've switched to handkerchiefs every time I cry over trespasser. <laughs> oh. Because I know it's coming, and I just don't want to be responsible for basically clear cutting a forest. <laughs> I use recycled tissues. I'm just going to point that out. They're recycled. Good thing. <laughs> okay. Next question. <laughs> it's 11 and Savvy's turn. Savvy's just like, okay, let's pull it back, everyone. <laughs> okay. Link Linkinski wonders, do you feel like you're writing for a protagonist or writing for the dialogue wheel? How does writing for multiple character parameters impact the story writing? Oh, good that's question. a really good question. It honestly depends on the scene. Yeah. If there are some scenes when I'm like totally coming into it going, I have the Inquisitor and I'm going to give you a choice here and your choice will determine this and that. And there are other times with when I clearly have, when I clearly write it with, this is the way all proper people will play the scene. And now I will go and create <laughs> choices for people who inexplicably don't think exactly like I do. Chargers. <laughs> I was gonna say that is, I mean, that issue in itself is a unique thing to writing for video games. I think you know, when people ask us what's different about writing for games, is that you know, in addition to all of the novel plot character building you know, type things that you do for a novel or a screenplay or a, a theater play or whatever, um, whatever. That that was good words I'm using. It's been good word words. Um, we're doing, we're doing the best we can. Okay. I give um, it a games are different because in addition to all of that, you're also, you know, as we say, telling people where to go and who to kill. You're delivering, you know, directional, very blunt, you know, language that has to be clear. Yes, and so it's, it's yeah. tricky to, yeah, write both the informational dialogue and the more 
poetical apostrophe fell dialogue. Um, and so it's, it works sometimes better than others, but it's sort of a constant challenge to make that all feel like it's part of the same thing and the same person is. The goal is that it never falls below 80% on either one of those yeah. panels. It can't always get to 100% on both. Mm -hmm. But you, yeah, you but if you can get it. I say. I love you and I want you, I want to have your bald babies and also we need to go over there and shoot that dragon <laughs> on both occasions. Yeah. That's hopefully what we get to some of the time. Well, your comment is strangely timely, Karen, because uh, oh, no. <laughs> F. Hotla has a question they really need the answer to. Okay. Are all ancient elves bald? They are. <laughs> They are in the murals and in the Temple of Mithal. Male elves and the character creator cannot sport beards, so it would be pretty interesting, a, a pretty interesting thing about elves, if true. Now, we know you may not be able to answer this, so whatever you can say. Hair is difficult in video games. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe True. <laughs> Hair is hard. Hair is difficult. It's and really it, it takes a lot of memory and space to make hair work. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Especially in a new engine you're trying to get used to while making this particular iteration of the game, perhaps. Yes. Fortunately, that's not our deal. Yeah. But um, fortunately for us, that's not our deal. Yeah, I think that's about all we can say yeah. on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Ben. My personal headcanon is after a certain time in Uthan era, since your metabolism would obviously that was slow Uthanara. down. Just, okay. It's not. <laughs> oh, God, I did it. Yeah, okay, so tease. No, you're speaking Southern De Southern Elven. I'm speaking Northern Elven. <laughs> like tomato and tomato. And Patrick's speaking Fade Elven. Exactly. <laughs> he really is. Most they of really them, are. most of them shave their heads so that their brains are closer to the fade. <laughs> Less impediment. <laughs> wow. Like, like I said, I just thought their metabolisms would slow down and it would cause yeah, their hair like, to fall yeah. out. I think that would, yeah, I mean, you know, as aging goes. <laughs> or maybe Solis just painted everyone bald because that's his hair. Because they should all be like him. Because I would also not put that past Solis. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, like, that is new hair. It was hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. Dread Wolf, very particular about hairstyles. Yeah. So if he couldn't paint it right, he didn't paint it at yeah, all. I messed up the eyes on the wolf. I had to put more eyes on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all the eyes. All the eyes. <laughs> I ran out of paint before the fresco yes. plaster started drying. Too many eyes, not enough hair. Who has time for hair when I have to make all these eyes? Yeah. You know, it'd be really fun. It would have been if we could have gone in with like Sarah and Sarah could have drawn hair on all of them. That would have been fun. And mustaches. Awesome. Yeah, and, my, and mustaches. Say, mustaches would have been phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then my elf would have been going, no, those are artifacts. We don't know the provenance of those. At least let the archaeologists in first. Yes. And Sarah would give no poops about any of it. No, no. yeah. No. Speaking of Solus, Teresalon Talas wants to ask about the Orlesian bard from the Dreadwolf Take You story to Winter Nights. What would have been his reaction if someone had asked him to do something perfectly normal for a bard, like make some music? <laughs> I would love this so much. <laughs> I can't see Solus resorting to armpit farting. I, but yeah. come on, getting up there with a lute and doing Killing Me Softly or something. I mean, no, Solus, <laughs> Solus is like a zillion years old. Do you think he hasn't picked up a stringed instrument in that time? Like, I, I mean, mean, he could do poetry. Yeah. The opportunity of for an elven power else. ballad. Yeah, yeah, half of his lines are in the Alleluia cadence. So if he's got that, yeah, that is, yeah. I think Solus would, I think Solus would, I think Solus would yep. break everyone's hearts and you would go like, what? He could do what? Yeah, and then that's what I was afraid of. Play. And he could only play sad songs, though. But that'll be one of those oh, times, yeah. like, I, I hate that he is a well-fleshed-out character, because he'll, then he'll do something cool like that, and I'll just be like, oh, God. <laughs> of course. No, I have you're to a like puncher. That, of course, yeah. Because yeah. you're a puncher. I love it. 
I love it that you're actually married to the creator of Solus and you punch Solus every chance. She's you super a punch. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. No, but it's a heartrending bunch because I do, he does just enough stuff like, you know, busting into killing me softly or something. And I'm like, oh, he's not all terrible. That makes me angry that I want to punch him, which makes me want to punch him more. It's a, it's a, it's a, right. whole, it's yeah. a beautiful, vicious circle. Yeah, it's a vicious circle. Yep. Okay. God, he's smarmy. I'm just. <laughs> you okay? You do good work. You do good work. <laughs> Hard Rock Unicorn Wonders. Good name. Good name. Such a good name. Band name. That's my band name. Yeah, that's all. How much time and consideration does it take to write a deep character like Solus? I imagine it being hard to give one such mysterious characteristics while still making them likable in some way. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> <Pulling that in. laughs> <laughs> no, I mean this guy goes back to the absurd premise I stated basically. It um it is, but you have to start broad, is yeah. is the thing. Uh I've told this story before, but my first draft of Solus was not good because the first draft of Solus literally all I had was he's the dread wolf, but he can't <laughs> tell you he's the dread wolf. So every every time you talk to Solus, he would say, Solus, what do you think about that cheese? Well, in the ancient elven times. <laughs> <laughs> you may have made the finest of cheeses with hollow milk and Andrew Wheel would dry them with her bow and you'd go like, it sounds almost like you them. No, what do you mean? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> and that was kind nope. of his only beat and it did not work. Uh, nope. So that was my Solis first draft. also likes cheese. Yeah. <laughs> so we gave Solis some outside interest. Yes, yeah, so we gave Solis some outside and realized, okay, Solis can be a fully realized character by talking about the veil and the fade. That can still work for him. Um, and really, when you get to that point, it makes a lot more sense. Um, and you basically establish a few simple rules. And it's not like you establish a few simple rules and then a computer can do it. But it's a few simple rules, and then everything sort of makes poetic sense. Like, and, I think, and that's how it works for all of the characters, right? So, you know, we'll have a few, uh, we'll have big discussions as part of the process. You know, how does each character feel about each other? How do they feel about this major event that happened? You know, we'll kind of catalog that, and that helps everyone to sort of orient around, um, you know, how they would interact with each other, and also helps make sure we don't have an overwhelming oh, really number of them all, you know, <laughs> believing one thing or the other. Um, so I'm writing Fenris thinking that Fenris is the emo one while Jennifer Hepler is doing Anders over in the corner? Yes, all the emos. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, and so that does, that does take time. I mean, yeah. we spend quite a bit of time talking about that. And then, you know, the more each of you write, the more I don't know, that's when it kind of starts, when they kind of start taking a life of their own. I feel like, you know, once you've got those parameters set and you can sort of almost predict in a way, you know, then something will come up and, you know, okay, what, what do we think about this? What do we, you know, and then people, the writers will debate back and forth how someone would respond to one thing or another. But my favorite thing about that story is it's a great example of what you were talking about earlier about a negative turning into a positive. So a weakness with the character in the first draft that Patrick had written, and then that they were able to change with this one new viewpoint and suddenly everything worked. And, you know, that only comes out of criticism. So. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's when the writer, the feedback process can be really helpful because, you know, people will suggest things, you'll think of things sure. and, you know, one or two of them will stick. I was Jennifer Hepler's was the one who first brought up the point he needs to do more than this and i think i think the fade stuff was actually her idea as well i don't remember i took i mean i you know i took it and ran with it but i think she she loved out the yeah, suggestion. suggestion i think so but the other another fun make him a giant nerd perfect make, oh, yeah, right. make him a nerd. <laughs> i think another um another thing another you know just a rule um, that I don't think I've articulated. I said it to Karen and she got really angry because because oh, she understood it. Uh -oh. <laughs> Was um, 
I, I think one of the reasons, again, in terms of rules, one of the reasons that people have radically different experiences of Solus is because Solus has the, and some people uh, will argue Solus is incredibly arrogant, and others will say, no, Solus is always talking about how flawed he is, and Solus will be the first person to tell you he's not perfect and he screwed up about it, is that Solus mirrors. Right. If you come into Solus, if you, if you approach Solus from a position of humility and say, I want to learn from you, Solus will bend over backwards to tell you how flawed he is and how he's just coming at this with his own limited understanding. If you come in with ego, Solus is genetically incapable <laughs> of not bristling <laughs> when he sees your ego to go, you shouldn't be that arrogant. And hitting you with the world's most sarcastic, backhanded, um, passive aggressive, just utterly negging you and utterly hitting you with microaggressions to poke at you because he can't not do that. You're kind of blowing my mind here right now, actually. I got a little atomic thing going off uh, yeah. Okay, yeah but in that tone i have to rethink some things. things i think that's really clever i'm gonna have to well, think about this like oh the evidence for certain fan theories grows yeah, i'm kind yeah. of this no i never ever ever quite looked at it this way i've learned something um <laughs> No, and Thank I'm you. saying that, oh, certain fan theories, now that's a little more evidence over in that <laughs> column. <laughs> um, but that is a thing that we've talked about a lot, you know, I mean, they, how you are different people in different situations. Right, and you're true. Empathetic and, uh, you know, and like it's almost a coping mechanism sometimes, you know, just the difference, yeah. you know. So I just think thematically as a human, or no, that's an interesting, an interesting thing to explore. Well, and, and that's a really good point. And then I would argue that also because Solus is kind of a bad liar a lot of the time, that he is giving us what, you know, you know he's, I, I do think the reactions are genuine. So if he reacts to us humbly, I actually think he is exploring a new emotion for him possibly there. Uh, <laughs> but, but no, but I mean, he is like, oh, right. You could actually be a person. Okay. Oh, that's and, the thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's, a, that's a, those are, Fascinating. Uh, meanwhile, Nita Conte, who uh, we've heard from once earlier, is asking another of my favorite questions, wondering, what is the Iron Bull's take on the watchword for Solus? He guessed it for oh, numerous times. Oh, I never had him give one, yeah. <laughs> but not Solus. Oh, no. <laughs> Here we go. It's not probably fade, right? It can't, can't be fade. I'm embracing now because it's got to be something. No, it's probably no, something no, Paul can't okay, pronounce in the open. I'm trying to figure out if it would just be pride or something like that. <gasps> that's a good one. I feel like that's too. Okay, On the the last word is to. Oh, something to make him not horny. Right. Okay, yeah. Bring <laughs> 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 me some something tea. Something you wouldn't shout. So, yeah. Tea. No, Bring no me Darjeeling. <laughs> no venom teabagging. It's <laughs> not that one. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, it's, it's going to be a I'm trying, I'm trying really hard to bring it back. But I've left the map. I'll be back. From that one. Yeah. Okay. Good. We have clipped through the edges of the map. We won't be seen for a couple of years. We'll oh, fine. my God. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so Question what? answered. Scrambled eggs. <laughs> oh. Or maybe boiled eggs. Probably boiled eggs. This day. Earl Grey. Poached. Well, on to today's. <laughs> I'm sorry, my brain hurts now. I don't like this too. <laughs> okay. A Gray Paladin asks, what are your personal favorite stories from Tevinter Nights and why the particular story? I can speak. Really, I can. No, <laughs> yeah. it's okay. Favorite story. All the ones you, I can't. This, yeah, I can't. It's hard showing favoritism. I don't want to. Um, I'm going to say Ryan's story because that's the first thing that he wrote that I ever got to edit and I thought that was really cool and I thought it was great that he wrote a story and I thought his story was really fun and I enjoyed it and I thought he balanced between the 
the humor and the seriousness really well, and it felt very Dragon Age to me. Which story was Ryan's for the people? Uh, Harold had the plan. Okay. I'm gonna say, um, Sylvia Fakadakudi's Luck in the Gardens. Yeah, that was that's really a good one. Um, because I loved the monster slaying plot. I loved oh, Sylvia does good creepy. I she mean, so well. Sylvia yeah. likes cosmic horror. Yeah, she totally gets that Lovecraft has a lot of problematic stuff going on, but she's also like, let's talk about the color out of space. And, <laughs> like. So oh, she, yeah, that was, that was really <laughs> cool. You know, the, what was it? It was the Kepperats? Was that what it was? It was with, with all the eyes everywhere. It was like, yeah. yes, that is horrible and weird. It would have been a, a horrific pain to do in a video game engine. So it's the perfect story to do in a short story like that. And I also really, you know, as a non-binary person, I love the gender fluid protagonist. I thought yeah. it was loved luck yeah. way to kind of explore um, Hollux and you know see what was going Hollux on. Was and, a great name. Yeah, Hollux was a fantastic name. But yeah, that, I just thought it was a lot of fun. And now I can have in my head is a mysterious color, unlike any scene on earth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that was I, I love that protagonist as well, and um, and and and. It was so playful and witty uh, in how they were presented to us and how they presented themselves to other people. And, um, and of course, we also got these beautiful, fabulous moments with Dorian and May, yeah. you know, and, and it, it was just a, a gift. So the constant yeah. feedback from the community, please let us kiss May. For the love of God. <laughs> I want to yes. kiss May. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Please. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. I figure somebody said if you didn't let my, her kiss Ayanto Jones, she was never going to speak to her again or something like that. I figure we tell you if you never let us kick me, kiss me, we'll never speak to you. So maybe yeah. <laughs> one can only hope. I couldn't kiss Krem, let me kiss me. I'm still holding all hope for kissing Krem. I'm just saying. It could happen. <laughs> I saved him. Krem um, <laughs> is part of the most complex relationship quantum yeah. Yeah. in the game, though. Yeah, true. Okay. What do you guys explain? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Leave that hanging for sorry. people who don't know. Hi, Hello. people who don't know. Yes, because Krem is one of three different people that Meriden could possibly end up with based on uh, what choices you made with Cole. If you turned Cole human, then Cole is with Meriden. If you turn Cole spirit, then Krim is with Meriden. If you turn Cole spirit, but also got the charters killed, then Zither is with Meriden. I just love that. Zither, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Zither. Zither is awesome. Zither! Mary, Mary wrote Zither, and I, I feel like Zither was one of her more genius inspirations. Yes. So I look forward to, if I ever go back to uh, Krem, having to untangle that quantum knot. Yeah. You can always take the Gordian, <laughs> you can take the Gordian approach and just stick a sword through it. I mean, oh <laughs> Or just embrace the polycule, it can be everybody. That was my exactly. answer. You can, that you can was, kiss everyone, right? That was my answer. Get May in there, then everyone can kiss everyone and we're all happy. Woo! Yeah. Woo! You've just you've just solved the fandom right there. That's, You're welcome. That's my answer. Alright, Savvy. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Onward. So sorry. The, ne <laughs> the next question is from Nick Nerdy Nick, who is our uh, Twitch team member. And has been wonderful. Oh yes, um, they definitely. have. They have been so wonderful. Shout out to Nick. Yay! Yes. They ask Karen and Patrick. We all know Solus's uh, distaste for tea. What do you think some of the other characters prefer, coffee or tea? Ooh, that's a good question. I feel like Dorian's a latte guy. 
<laughs> very it would, a very complicated latte order yes like like your hot chocolate dorian would have yeah. his coffee order be like that <laughs> well i i canonically snuck bull in as a hot chocolate lover but i could see him doing coffee if it was coffee or tea I like bull liking hot chocolate though yes and, yeah get him a hat it goes with his little with soft chewy center yeah right yeah, yeah. exactly exactly right. let's see and he spikes um, it though he totally spikes that hot chocolate <laughs> Who wants to imagine coal on coffee? Wow. Oh, boy. Oh, no. <laughs> just, just free associating colors at random. Yeah. <laughs> you feel like... Red, blue, raspberries, Tuesday. You feel like, like the blue. guy in... You feel like Brad Pitt's character in 12 Monkeys. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And with the cookies, I feel like like I'm liking Cole and Sarah eating cookies and drinking tea. Yep. Decaf Aww. tea in Cole's case. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, cold like, does not need caffeine. No, <laughs> whatever it is, it, sh it should be decaf. Um, I feel like Blackwell is a pretty coffee dude. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. campfire coffee, yeah, like bad you know, coffee, bad. Yeah, yeah coffee. like yeah. like convenience store coffee. Yeah, like can be used to clean our like strip, yes. paint stripper for the house. Yeah. I could see Viv going against type and doing coffee. But having it be like like demi toast, like yeah, Turkish like, coffee, like, like, like coffee. Yes. Ooh, I like right. that. Yeah. If, if, if Catherine the Great um, drank a ridiculous amount like, of espresso every yeah. morning, we were, Karen's family went to uh, St. Petersburg, and so, uh, and we yes, and we went along with them. And uh, so we got to see Catherine the Great's palace, and we learned how much coffee Catherine the Great drank. And it was like, oh, a, it, it was slept like four hours a night. It was a bunch hours. of espresso. Yeah. Yeah. And she drank all of it, and I can just kind of see Viv drinking yeah. that, and it doesn't even have an effect Maybe on her. Maybe not anymore. quite that. Right, much. right. With like the little demi tasse cup with the, the gold around the rim, and very elegant and refined, but yeah. still strong and punchy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like that. Who have we forgotten? Um, I'm gonna go on to the next question from okay, Kala. Uh, Kala Elizabeth has a question for Patrick. Um, if you could write a story for any existing character in any franchise, who would it be? I'm assuming other than Dragon Age. So. Oh, in any oh, franchise? other franchise? Yeah. In any, in any other I was going to nominate Zither, but we're not. <laughs> yeah. The Adventures of Zither! <laughs> <laughs> uh, this needs to be a web series. I would watch that. I would absolutely watch that. Actually, yeah, that would be amazing. That would be really good. Zither, bodice rep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. There's somebody standing out to the side. That cost five gold to fix. What the hell? <laughs> okay, so other fandom. Sorry, I derailed. <laughs> So oh, other my, IP. I been my real that was it? Yeah. Okay, I would believe that. You would have a lot of fun yeah, writing that. Yeah. Half hours in, I think that might be my real Okay, good. This is how banter starts happening. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. Rebecca, also known as at Azcabella, wonders, is there any from, anything from the past games, dialogue, item descriptions, or entire scenes that you're still surprised to this day made it into the game. The <laughs> Iron Bull's romance comes to mind, LOL. <laughs> Actually, I'm not surprised that made it into the game because there's a lot of effort that had to go into getting it into the game. Uh... I kept waiting for someone to notice the codex entry that was all Transformers puns. Yeah. <laughs> I kept waiting for someone. Okay, I kept the part where on Jaws of Hack-On, Okay, so my dirty secret is I like character stuff. Just but the one. Just the one. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm effing delightful. But my dirty secret is I really do not like codex entries. Um, I don't like. But you do. No, what I do don't. You like, don't. But then you I don't like reading them. Because then do. every time I like. Well, yeah, because I clicked on them and I was like, ah, oh, this dates back to this dynasty and this person and this fjord. And it's, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't care. I'm not all good entries are like well, that. Yeah, so they, at one point, the writers said, uh, hey, listen, we've got codex entries for the bad guy in Jaws of Hackam. We've got codex entries for 
Bar of Sun Hair, the Stone Bear Hold Avar that you work with. We've got entries, I think, for even Bram Kenrick. And it really seems like Storvok or the Bear needs a yes. And I was like, yes. I know where this is she, going. From. Does she really? I don't think she does. And I, I really said, thought she did. And yes, and it was all the remaining writers, because someone had gone off to work on other projects since we we're on, on DLC by that point. And they all were like, Patrick, we really think Stor it, it's gonna, that was when the dare. Remember, I said how much it's gonna, from the dare. It's gonna look weird if Storvaker doesn't have a codex entry. And I said something snippy <laughs> about how many people read our codex entries. But then I went, okay, <laughs> if I'm doing it, I'm gonna do it snarky. And the and the other writers went, that is acceptable. And expected, and that is how uh, Storvaker as Regina George from Mean Girls. <laughs> it's the codex the entry. codex entry ever. It's One so time, good. Starbucker <laughs> slashed across the face. It was amazing. Would you say that writing her codex entry was unbearable? <laughs> uh, yes. I think Sylvia was responsible for most of the bear puns. Yeah. Sylvia, <laughs> kept, all in Sylvia just puns. kept yeah. adding bear puns. Yeah. And I think, again, Sylvia was waiting for someone to stop her, and nobody stopped her. <laughs> I mean, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah, I think it's a lot of things are smart, like cheese. I'm still flummoxed and amazed by the amount of cheese that's just right. like all over the place. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that Luke writes, I'm rather surprised he ended <laughs> <laughs> A lot of what he wrote for Sarah, I'm still kind of shocked. I think a lot of it, because it was relatively incomprehensible, so there was a layer under oh, there, the dirty, stuff. the dirty stuff that people yeah. didn't really necessarily get. And Luke didn't and, care, too, because Luke yeah. was, was I, I talk a good game, but when localization comes calling, because Luke and I are both pretty good at, um, at the, the school of dirty writing, which is write something dirty, but make it so that only people, only certain people will get the joke, and the people who get the joke are not the people yeah, who are going to be offended using, by the joke. Yes. So right. Not using dirty words. Yeah. And, yeah. And I use it. So it's so it, uh, but when localization comes calling, I become a guilty schoolboy and Luke just doesn't care. Yeah. Luke is just like, all right, here are the orifices we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> one where, oh, and almost no one hears this. And I'm sorry, I apologize. I apologize if you've heard this story before, Andrew. But if you start dating the Iron Bull and then, mm -hmm. and then, but then move from him to Sarah, there's a particular banter that fire. I, I know the phrase. I'm not going to say it. Pop the cork. <laughs> loosen and the yeah. lid. It's no, loosen no, the lid. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm sure it's, there's a pop the cork one there too. You and the Inquisitor hunt. Sarah gets defensive and go. And Zvol says, no, no, it's good. I'm glad you guys are happy. Just glad I could loosen the lid for you. <laughs> <laughs> and localization pinged us and was like, could you explain what loosening the lid means in this context? And I was like, no, no, I could not. I mean, metaphorically, I think the lid represents the Inquisitor's feelings. <laughs> and Luke like just looks like at me as I'm writing this, she goes, let me move. <laughs> The lid is her vagina. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Germany. Have fun with that one. <laughs> the best part of that banter is if you have coal, she doesn't have a jar up there. <laughs> oh, sweet coal. I love coal. <laughs> Oh my god, my sides yeah. are <laughs> like a lot of the Randy Dowager stuff actually I was sort of surprised Luke got away with. Um there are some some deep Randy Dowager things, which I love. I mean yeah. I, yeah. I am certainly not bringing attention to any of this. Nope. So yeah. <laughs> which well, makes to Venture Nights that much better because of the revelations and you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was so happy. Yes. <laughs> That's all. Okay, next question. Yes. <laughs> oh, poor Sally. Once, <laughs> once more. Um, 
Jeanette at Jeanette Kirkner wants to know, it's not a Dragon Age question, but Patrick, the Prophecy Con spoilers. We're just putting that out there so anybody who reads your books, you're about to be spoiled if you didn't finish Prophecy Con. Okay. But the Rogues Republic books available in fine bookstores everywhere. <laughs> They're awesome. Everybody buy them. Yes. Self-promotion nailed it. <laughs> um, is Hessler okay? He didn't float away after the Prophecy Con. Wait. Oh, uh, okay. So Prophecy Con is okay. Then Paladin Caper. Paladin Caper, he has some stuff going on. <laughs> but I think aside from the glowing, I think the... <laughs> Oh, my, I can't. my intended implication is that after the Paladin Caper, uh, he is okay if, as long as Turn wears, um, you know, a blindfold to sleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he's corporeal? Yeah. I, mean, I wasn't sure as, of that myself. So I think Eve's okay. So my intention, and, you know, we'll see if... If anyone ever asks for more rogues books, my intention I is want that, more rogues books. <laughs> my intention is that it's a mode he can flip off, but as long as he is focusing, he is he is okay being corporeal. So I don't know, maybe he maybe he he flits off or accidentally walks through walls when he's not thinking about it, but still capable of having a healthy and happy wakeful life with Turd. Because Turd and Hessler deserve a happy ending. Oh, they do. They so do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Turd. That's awesome. Okay. Well, um, Jeanette, by the way, I love you that you asked that question. Um, Thank you for reading my books. <laughs> yeah, they're so good. Um, and I'm, uh, I, yeah, all right. I'm just going to move on. Uh, I was about to reference something really sad, but I'm not going to. Okay. <laughs> so Rachel, otherwise known as Blood Red Rach, wonders, nice. do y'all find yourselves, nice use of y'all, Rachel, do y'all yes. find yourselves quoting lines or moments around the house or office? Other than the and other than the geese, are there any ridiculous jokes or memes that you use regularly? Oh my god, kind of all the time. Yeah, right? that's a fair amount. <laughs> the geese. I'm, I'm trying to think of what particularly, but yeah, I mean we're always referencing stuff and referencing <sighs> jokes that were maybe made about said stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, our a lot of the writer humor gets very meta. It's jokes about the the writing process. So it's a lot of, so sometimes it's lines that didn't quite make it, or it's our cruddy first drafts. Um, but yes, as well as all the lines that actually shipped. Yeah. <laughs> and then they no, finish. I like a lot. I'm a simple <laughs> girl, and I still love <laughs> it's, a good line. Line. it's a good line. It's yeah. a really good line. Yeah. And then the, their, last, <laughs> their last question is, most importantly, did Varric file off serial numbers for Swords and Shields, and who is it really about? <laughs> yeah, I think we have to ask. We have to ask Varric or Varric's occasional ghostwriter, Mary Kirby. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good question for Mary. Okay. Yeah, that is a Mary question. I suspect probably. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know the I mean, he's he's not shy about putting most of the characters. Yeah. 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 Oh, That's a really good question. Now I'm curious, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're right what you know, I want to know what Mary knows. <laughs> right, yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Okay, the next one, I think we already addressed this. A lasagna noodle is asked, I know what I want to know all the secrets and ask Dragon Age related questions, but I had a really important one that is more pressing and I need to know what kind of people you are, paper towels over or under. And oh, I think this you is the one! The, oh, good. This is the one, yeah. <laughs> yes. We got that one. That's it, yes. So, over? Yes. And what was, there were two parts of that. Paper For towels and toilet paper. No, I thought there was, oh, but then there was, more. anyway, over. over. We Something are united over. in our over. Yeah. Okay, but for paper towels, since it's upright, I think it was something oh, in Witter Shins. Shins. That's what it was. Yes. yes, it was over and Witter Shins on paper towels. Yes. That's okay. What it was. Don't think uh, about it too much. Just... <laughs> <laughs> we've entered the lightning round. <laughs> well, we're sort of, yeah. Our next question is from Essam, who asks, or who says, Yay! <laughs> yeah. I thought it was so cute. Yeah. I had to leave it in. I loved it. <laughs> Who or what was the inspiration for Briala in the Masked Empire and Dragon Age Inquisition? 
Me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, did you kill Karen's parents? <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh, it's so dark. Not in that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm okay. You're good. It's all good. You're solid. <laughs> You're steady. That's good. Um, I worried the dog. It's okay. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that face back there, by the way. My mom's missing it. Hi. I don't know that I had a great individual reference um, because it honestly was, well, it was one part, she was already in the game and there was a, there was a character. I, I, I got the name to be slightly shorter. I think it was originally... It's in the box with you. Oh, no, because at one point it was... Briathos, and I went, Briathos sounds like a guy's name. I guess it sounds like a... Um, and also it's an S at the end, and we're trying to avoid that. It sounds like a Greek name, too, yeah. I was going to say, it sounds yeah. like a gladiator. Yeah. And then I got in, so I was like, what if it's... I mean, that's probably... Briathala, and then everyone went, wow, Patrick, healthy much? And I went, okay, <laughs> well, Briala, and that was what shipped. Although I think for a while it was like, Briathala Lathlianos, or whatever, you know, it's just, it's just <laughs> how long I could get away with it. And then I think I, yeah, that was the Paladin paper act that I got. There is a Lathlian's name actually in there. Um, we are not. Karen was out. really happy about that name. I just make up nicknames that annoy the crap out of them. So <laughs> also, fair. <laughs> also fair. But no, so it was, um, it was one part that the, okay, I need an existing character who's a bit of a revolutionary. And then one part, a little bit of Sherlock Holmes, or possibly le maybe less Sherlock Holmes and more Hermione Granger. Smart, mm -hmm. watchful, um, not in a position of power. And then, and this is totally random, and I cannot even remember the name of the movie, which makes it super not helpful. But I'm remembering something about, there was a movie I watched like a third of, and, rem and only vaguely remember, because this is where my most useful references come from. It's, it was a black kid in New York City trying to help his family get free of a gang. And he was using um, chess with his estranged grandfather as a metaphor as for how he's helping remove the gang players and stuff like that. And again, it was the same thing as a little bit like Hermione. It was the, here's a, here's a character whose only power is their brains. They have right. strategic thinking and the ability to be ruthless, but they're not going to win a gunfight. They're not going to be able to like bully anyone into anything. It always is going to have to be thoughtful observation and knowing which button to press at which time. And so and it wasn't the wire. It wasn't the wire. No. Okay. I know. I don't think so. I thought it was. I remember it as being a movie. And There's a lot I, of chess I, stuff. When, you know, they talk about. Yeah. A lot of no. Chess no. Stuff. I, I, yeah. Totally. But, you messed with the nope, king. Yeah. It's Come with gonna, the king. You best not miss. Yeah. No, it's yet another movie I can't remember the name of. Super helpfully. <laughs> um, question for my little cohorts here. I feel like we could skip the next round because they're all either things that are yes or no answers or we've talked about. Can I just eating, skip to my next one? Eating yeah. the tissue? Or, well, I and is I that, think one of them we actually can't ask them yeah. personally. So um, I just want to get to, I don't want to, I mean, I want to move forward if it's okay. Yep. Um, so I'm going to go down to the next question for me, which is asked by India Nev, uh, India.nev, who asks the eternal question, which romance do you ship the most? <laughs> Sorry, I had that. We love, no, I mean, I come on. I just laughed because... Any, what's your favorite? What do you like the most? It's like, I can't answer this. Because, yes, it's like, I, they're well, all the Karen, the it's next Dorian one. Bull. You know it's Dorian well, yes, Bull. Dorian, Dorian Bull, Bull, yes, obviously. It's Dorian uh, Bull, and the answer for me is always the next one. I'm kind of into the polycule <laughs> thing now, though, that we've talked about it. I think that's kind of fun. Okay, you get that one approved. Okay. You have fun with that. Okay. And of course, there's also the eternal answer of shipping Dorian with Dorian, because, you <laughs> well, know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, because like all the romances are, are different. Like I really enjoyed editing 
Josephine's romance because it was so sweet and so cute <laughs> and just Disney princess. Perhaps. Disney princess <laughs> and pure, as the kids would say. And I really, um, okay, the dog is in the garbage. Sorry. Uh, um, here, come here. I have this tiny bit of tissue. There you go. Okay. I think a, a lot of nerds, like us nerd people speaking as one, love Josie's as well because she's so clueless that she's in a romance at the time. Yeah, and it's just so cute. And <laughs> you I know? Just, yeah, and it's fun and it's sweet. And, yeah. it, you know, it feels real in a way that is kind of the polar opposite of Iron Bull's romance, which is also a favorite of mine. And I just, I, I love that dichotomy. It's so, my favorite. It's my yeah. favorite. I love him. Sorry. Giant ridiculous wolf head. <laughs> then let's see. You get Kristen's. Yes, Kristen Leffler asks, was there any sort of pivotal <laughs> moment when working on a character, whether it was a new realization or something you decided to change that was unplanned? Pivotal moment working on a character where something changed. Or you had a new realization. I feel like that sometimes happens earlier, like like during the, the peer reviews and stuff that we were talking about, you know, and you realize, oh, so let's use a different facet or, mm -hmm. oh, maybe this character thinks about that this way. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it took me a while to get, moving away from just solo stuff, it took me a while to get um, what Cole was doing, aside from just randomly free associating and accidentally reading minds. <laughs> Except that he was, okay, Cole is a spirit of compassion who is attempting to help people process pain that they're having trouble dealing with. Mm -hmm. And so he is an incredibly short-sighted, somewhat incompetent guardian angel. <laughs> That's <laughs> perfect. Aww. And But we love him. Yeah. Yes, we do. But that was what clicked it for me when I went from just like, okay, no, I, I can't just have Cole be weird for any reason. There are things, because for a while people are like, I have no idea what Cole would or wouldn't say, aside from the fact that it's going to be weird. But when we figured out those rules, like, okay, Cole is always kind. He just is incredibly short-sighted. So approach it from that way. He's never going to be deliberately mean to someone. He's just not going to think through the consequences. And he is, he's short-sighted about his goals, but can be astonishingly labyrinthine in how he approaches them. And again, I get that and people go, okay, got it. That's how he gets to, okay, I have to put uh, peeled grapes on the windowsill to attract spiders to make webbing for the healers. I loved that, by the way. I did too. Uh, Patrick, can I ask a, dance. can I ask a really quick question? Um, you used poetic uh, techniques several times in several different ways, like both with Solace and with Cole. Do you write poetry? I don't. Um, I think of myself as a giant hack when it comes to poetry. <laughs> um, Aww. I just I. Well, Okay, can I jump in a little bit, Doc? Because you're good at music. You haven't taken, I mean, we talk about music a lot because you weren't, you get music lessons and stuff, no. but you feel tempos and you feel cadences and you get rhyming schemes. And so I think. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that is something that you're good at. Um, so I don't sell yourself short on I am not a poet because music is a kind of poetry, I think. Hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. You said that just, perfectly. Yeah. I, yeah, I just, I don't, for me, Brienne does poetry. Brienne does poetry, though, yes. Brienne, Brienne, Brienne is our poetry. She has published poetry. Oh, yeah. A lot of poetry. And her poetry is amazing, and she does images and things that I can never approach. I just, I, but I, I really like just playing with the form. I like playing with the words. Uh, thank you. That is amazing. Uh, we just passed 2K. Yay! Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That is amazing. Wow. And I do have to step away for a short bit again. Hopefully. Uh, we, I'm not sure. It's at, it's at 7.30. Uh, we may have to kind of move towards Absolutely. Of course. Yeah, so like, are there how much? 
a, a bunch more or no there are no. Uh, we have four or five more questions and we'll probably make it uh three or four or two or whatever okay, okay. we can also try and not tangent no t no more tangents no segues oh god yeah. <laughs> okay is it possible <laughs> savvy on to you babe okay um jenna lh wonders making a game of this scale seems like a massive collaborative process it is that <laughs> yep. i'd be interested to hear any stories of collaboration across teams not just between writers that unexpectedly resulted in really cool unexpected developments to story and or gameplay i will it kind of happens a lot. yeah it happens all the time I mean, just again, off the off the top of my head, Solus doing the murals was something I had never even considered, and it was just something that um, the artists wanted to add. They said, "Hey, we don't have a whole lot going on in this room. Can Solus add murals as we go along?" Because it kind of like has him helping tell the story, and I thought, "Yeah, that's awesome, sweet." And now I can't imagine him not having that kind of artistic. Right, it became yeah. canon for you. Yeah, very true. Yeah, so I, that, that that happens all the time. I mean, in Solus's awesome. appearance, we never wrote Solus as walking around with a wolf jaw necklace on there. Again, that was the character artist. Cole's hat. Cole's hat. Cole's hat. The hat he hides under. Oh, I love all that. And all of the you know, and the character always changes when the voice actors come in. The characters change, yeah, from the art. Yeah, that's what, so when, uh, um, sorry, I'm about to say that. Uh, Robin, Robin, Robin Addison. Robin Addison. Um, and when she, her voice started coming back and there was so much more giggling and laughing and just, you know, hearing what she could do really um, added a lot to how Luke wrote her and the kinds of stuff that, that he was writing for her. So that was a fun collaboration because her little giggles oh, were the best right yeah. they were so amazing um let's see z abdo wants to know both of you uh patrick and karen the political climate of the dragon age universe divides even players and their allegiances we <clears> see this trickle into people's views of characters uh in real life getting fired up over who they believe is right and wrong are you ever surprised by just how fervently the player base can react over their views not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know if surprised is the right word. I think it's cool. I mean, like, how do I say? These, I wouldn't say like this game, or like these, these games, take the place of real life, but I feel like they can be a way to work through real life things in a way mm -hmm. that isn't as potentially painful and harmful as real life could be. I might not agree with someone I know personally or someone I'm related to politically, and mm -hmm. there are damaging consequences sometimes to following through in discussions or having discussions about that. And so I think it's great when that can be, um, for me anyway, a mechanism to process some of that and to, you know, a passion that I feel for something that I don't feel like I can express in real life. I can express when talking mm -hmm. about characters and, um, actions things that happened an event i don't know that's my personal take on it anyway so and, it works it for me stays, that way so i'm not necessarily surprised if that how is how it works for other people sometimes and it's a safe space in which to do that actually yeah, yeah exactly it's fantasy so yeah and if i can you know i can talk about punch and solace all i want and we laugh but you know it's at the end of the day it's a character that's about pixels and i guess i could take it too far but yeah. <laughs> You could know. <laughs> you never take it too far. You're talking to the Thank wrong you. people. Um, if you want, if you, yeah, we're, we're not here to tell you. So stop. No. Um, uh, Savvy, I'm going to jump ahead to your next one, okay? Because I think that, that the other one before it is just a 15 minute okay. discussion. And it's not really Dragon Age oriented. So, yeah. Okay. Sopmo 
wonders, how do you work with the fictional languages of Dragon Age while writing? Is there some system you and other writers refer to, or is this more of a figure it out yourself kind of situation? No, the least. <laughs> so one of the things I really like doing, because I'm kind of weird this way, um, is to help record all of the uh, languages. So uh, Dave Gator et al. who worked on Origins, um, there, in fact, recently I just went and pulled some of the, we had a wiki page that was actually, or a wiki site that was one of the first things I did when I joined Origins, or one of my first jobs was to help sort of gather all of the things that were coming out of David and the other writers' brains and write them down so everybody else, you know, had records of them and knew. So the beginnings of Tavine, that's why I know Tavine, and all of that, and Keenlot, and, and <laughs> Elvin, and so there are some base rules. There are some rules or more rulish than others, which are more like guidelines. And so we kind of start with that, and then we build on what's already there. And so, like, if there's a scene, Solis and all his musings in in elven oh, elven glory is elven glory <laughs> <laughs> like yeah and I'm, i have been working on a canary thing um we yeah, and not not yes no yeah can i sorry i was blanking between well no and you probably have to choose your words carefully too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes it is an active thing go i think it's it's interesting how the different writers approach it. Um, the language was here when bo like both uh, the Canary and Elven languages were here when I got to the project. Mm -hmm. So I operate from a very, uh, I have been told, possibly overly deferential space where if I need a new word for something, I will go around painstakingly looking <laughs> for an existing word, asking people if they think there's a root that I can use from an existing word and just change to make it to the, and um, other writers will just go, it's our language, dude. Just, just make a new word. That was Luke, right? Who would do that? <laughs> yes, yes, that was Luke. <laughs> Sorry. I, I put noms in there for cake. <laughs> and so, um, that's like, you know, if we, if we come up with something new, we, because Mary was around for a lot of the language creation and she's sort of, uh, in my brain anyway, the language yeah. guru. So, you know, I will run stuff by her to make sure it's not A, immediately contradicting something that's already there or B, sort of make sense within the rules that are set. Yeah, like there are a few, I can tell there's one, there's, okay, there's like, there's one elven word that someone put in and didn't, didn't check with Mary or Dave on that uses a CH, mm -hmm. I think. Right, a and hard, yeah. 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 That uses the ch sound. I'm like, Elvin doesn't use ch, yeah. but it, like, it does in that one word because it kind of snuck in without getting passed by the Mary and Dave does this fit the language standard. And so, yeah, we do, we do when making new words, try to, we do the sound test, we do the, um, does this, you know, both, is this, is this too different from a word to sound like a real Canary word? Uh, or also, is it yet another dang two A's together? Another letter, another letter at the end. Apostrophe, like, apostrophe. <laughs> so it's cool. Oh, you're talking, I thought you were talking about Elvin. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about Elvin. Oh, yeah, okay. no, no, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's like, okay, we, we, we have too many R words already. Make this one a T word. Okay, great. I'll make it a T word. So, but also we do talk about, you know, as a human being, we're living language, learning languages change all the time. Dictionaries, other new words of the year. And, you know, how many English words are words that are borrowed from other languages? And yeah. we try to factor that in as well, you know, because it's not created in a vacuum. Yeah. Um, and that's not just to cover our butts when we screw something up. <laughs> but, you know, it, it also... You know, maybe the DH word came from somewhere else. You know, it's not an elven word, but it's right. a word that came from elsewhere. So, nerdily and imperfectly, but the best we can. Right. right. Um, I'm going to um, stop them all who uh, asked that question. They wanted to thank you for uh, what you've created and for creating Solace and that uh, Solace helped them deal with uh, recovery with some mental health issues. And mm, PS, so awesome. and the PS hashtag safe lesson. Full of <laughs>
<laughs> so, no, no. I love We're that. We're saving philosophy. <laughs> oh, God. Well, well, I'm, never, I'm never getting over it ever and then um they had a i'm gonna uh, ask a final kind of combination question because they're related okay. sapomo wants to know if um if patrick could talk a little bit uh if you could talk about the hallelujah cadence and rhythm and why that was essential to the character and then riagers wanted to know about character creation for solace and what may have helped you birth his character so I love the, uh, well, also Karen needs to chime in here because Karen is the one who actually has musical training. We did so, a lot of talking about three, four time and, and six, eight time and, six, and how, eight I, and, how I would and just kind of come up to her and go like, I think because it's kind of sadder, right? It sounded <laughs> like not angry sadder, it's like thoughtful sadder. I'm right? a music theory nerd, so if it helps, Karen, I'm so here for you. <laughs> Conversations we had. Like it's purple, but it's not the kind of purple I don't like in the song. <laughs> I said that particular thing. Uh, yeah, but we do. We do. We ask about things that you talk, you know, say around the house, like singing. As I'm trying, you know, we're singing through syllables <laughs> things. It's like no, you just combine two syllables into one note. It's like yeah, well, you could sing it that way. <laughs> <That's dumb. laughs> Oh God, what did I return to? <laughs> we were talking about the, <laughs> we were talking about the, the six, eight. Well, the yeah. hallelujah, uh, hallelujah. cadence. And uh, I mean, I guess it's, I guess it's the hallelujah cadence, but you know, it, it's, it's in a six, eight rhythm. It's a number of measures that I won't go into, but I guess it's okay. This is how these conversation goes. I will let it go. We're it's fine, it's fine. Go. It's all fine. <laughs> What's fun is you got all of us Dragon Agers out here singing all of his dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like, you know, I, mean, I totally went through. I sang all of them. Yeah, and if you're going to pick a song, it's a really good song. So. That's a good song. Cool, and, and it encompasses the mood. It's that wistful. It's exactly it's all wistful, those things that you were saying. Yeah, it's wistful. I mean, it gets regret. And, it's... and I, think it, I think it's a benefit, personally, that you don't get all hung up like I just did on all of the technicalities of it because you focus on the mood that it evokes and that is important so you know i can help you with the nitpicky stupid parts but you have the not stupid but the yeah. nitpicky parts i mean for me that was my that was my clumsy writer attempt to say okay i need to get into the mind of someone who is impossibly old and saw a world that a normal person in dragon age can never have imagined and so that was my, I'm going to have him do this, and that will just give him this, this little otherworldly cadence. If this were, I know I've mentioned Doctor Who far too many times. No, but, no, yeah, but... <laughs> but the Tenth Doctor, I love what they did because they didn't have him do it a ton, but every once in a while, when he dropped his kind of manic pixie facade, mm -hmm. they would say something and they would do just a little music behind it, I think it was like the oud music or something. Was, mm -hmm. And they would just kind of let you see like, oh, oh, there's a, I've, I've only ever been seeing the tip of the iceberg with him. There's yeah. this whole other thing I can't understand. And I wanted to capture a little bit of that. And since I couldn't say, please have a random musical cue come in. <laughs> I just sort of invented that to say, I'm going to have this, I'm going to do this. And most people won't notice, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, actually, Why like, not? It worked for uh, Fenris's it. conversations in two. His theme always kicked in in the middle of his conversations. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, 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 no, I really love that. And I also think um, what's great with that is that if, you, if you're if you aware of that inspiration, the, the 10th Doctor is the most charming, wonderful, lovely person in the world until he's terrifying which is very brief it's not a lot but every <laughs> once in a while you just go oh okay right you know and um yeah. so uh, I, I i just think it's a, a great subtext so yeah and i like that it's subtle and you can't necessarily tell but you can tell something's different but you can't necessarily put your finger on it and i think that's very i think that's very clever with the occasional and this is i think as close to a dragon age future game spoiler as i can get was something that came to me in a peer review 
a few weeks ago when something I wrote was being peer reviewed and someone said, this character talking to Solus needs another beat. They need to get more than just one line here. And I said, but if, but I wrote that in the cadence. <laughs> I can't give him just one more line. It's in the cadence. I'd have to do another few lines. And the room, because we're over the, like, the Zoom call went silent. And then I can't remember if it was you or Sylvia just said, you kind of did that to yourself, dude. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I think other people have said it, but Sylvia did say it later. But that... Yeah, you kind of set yourself up there. <laughs> Which I think we kind of said at the same time. Now I'm remembering that. Yeah. Really. I think she said, whose fault is that? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Fair. That must have felt really good to them to say, actually, I'll bet. A little bit, probably. <laughs> But you know, as a lead, you have to give them these little victories. Yeah, you know. Well, um, I, I think we're wrapping up, you guys, and I know it's the end of your, uh, well, afternoon. You're in your evening now. We are yeah, we're so giving up on eight, so we've been having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> we are so grateful. And is there anything that we didn't ask that you wish that we had asked you? Something not about solid? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm so sorry. No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm Fine. kidding. Patrick, no, I'm apologizing. No, no, I'm totally kidding. kidding. Patrick, I'm trying great to be funny. That always make me cry. Morden, Tally, seen on Rannock, Cole, Iron Bull, Solus, all of them have made me cry at some point. Not necessarily because it's sad, but because I'm so emotional. Why do you do this to me? <laughs> He's really good at the feels. I, it's true. They are. Yeah. I mean, all y'all are pretty good They're at the pretty feels. Good. You like encourage it. each other to be to be milking of the feels. Yes. But that's why we're, I think that's partly why we're all here. You're all very good at that, by the way, too. Uh, the whole team. And we, I really want to thank all of your fellow writers and editors and all of the other artists and, and amazing people that y'all work with. Cause well, well, thank absolutely. you. And, and we really want to thank you because... Yeah. Again, looking at how Dragon Age Day came about because of you all, and looking at how you didn't just do it as celebrating yourselves, but you turned it into this thing that you can use to help other people, that is, it's okay. And I don't know how to say this the right way, so please, this, I'm just gonna say it the sincere and possibly wrong way, but that is what I love that is what I want Dragon Age to be about, because Dragon Age at its core is, yes, there are big sweeping epic events, but when it comes down to it, it's always about people. It's always about individual people, and y'all doing this program to help people and, you know, and yeah, raise money for charity is just like, yes, at the core, it's about people, and that means so much. And and wolves. <laughs> and wolves. Well, when, well, when, when Teresa came up with the idea, she did not know that we would be in an actual blight at some point doing Dragon Age. <laughs> but, you know, you work with what you got. We're very proud to be here. I was telling someone today, you know, they're asking, we're talking about what makes the Dragon Age fan community special. And I said, you know, it really is appropriate to me. It's very indicative of the lovely people that I've met in the fandom that this is what Dragon Age Day is, doing something for other people. And um, that means a lot. It's just, you all are a special group of people. And um, especially <laughs> on the internet, you don't say that lightly, you know? But I mean, how <laughs> much fun is this? Getting to sit down and just chat with you all about this stuff that yeah. we all care the same amount about all this kind of nerdy, silly, yet really meaningful stuff. And that's really <laughs> special, especially these days. It's Agreed. It, yeah. So. We're in a community, finding, finding solace in our community. Yeah, exactly. My thing when I said, okay, let's make this happen, the thing was, I don't know about everybody else's playthroughs, but my characters always end up being the ordinary person being thrust into an extraordinary circumstance mm -hmm. yeah. and using that extraordinary, cir extraordinary circumstance to help people who come yeah. to them for help. So that's why 
especially with Dragon Age Day, I wanted that charity aspect to it because ordinary people, when they group together, can do extraordinary things. Yeah. Granted, yeah. I can't shoot lightning from my hands. Um, <laughs> if I if yeah. I try to pick up a sword, I'd probably end up skywalkering myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's a verb. <laughs> But what I can do is find people who are charities who need help and raise some money for them, especially yeah. in times like this where people are really hurting and the black community needs help. The disabled community needs help because they're the ones being the most strongly affected by circumstances going on. You've got, you know, the black community is high, highly affected by COVID. The indigenous community is just being rocked by COVID. The disabled community has to wonder if they somehow manage to get COVID, are they going to be the first one on the chopping block if the, if the ICs user fault. Well, we're yeah. discovering that they are expendable according to many uh, this year, which is just yeah. not something you want to find out about yourself, but okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And no one is expendable. So right. no. yeah. that's and why thing, we're doing this. That reminds me. So one of the reasons I love singing in a choir is a thing that my very first choir director said that uh, choirs the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And I feel like this is, you know, a similar thing. Everyone is, and people are giving of their artistic selves and all the drawings and just all the creative stuff that people are doing. Mm -hmm. it's a great way to express themselves, which feels great. And then also do something to help make the world better. And that's just really special. And we're really grateful to all of you for all of the work because you put a hell of a lot of work into this and it is seen and it is really appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's worth it. You guys yes. make it worth it. You do too. <laughs> Thank you. It's a life of love. <laughs> it really is. Um, thank you both so much. We are so honored and thrilled and um, we're all just going to hang up and be super happy and goofy the rest of the day. I know I will. And, um, um, and, and best of all, I recorded it this time and I don't have to type it out over the next four months. <laughs> that went well, didn't it? You didn't even remember I, some of the stuff you said by the end. Um, yeah. Oh, and I missed parts of it. So did we get any cat serenading this time? Uh, we uh, unfortunately did not. I don't think so. We had some cat flopping. Um, we yeah. had some dog tug of war. Just so much dog. <laughs> a lot of dog. Oh, wow. It was mostly significant amount dog. of dog. <laughs> the cat was on my lap. He weighs like 15 pounds. So, you know, so uh, stash. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, I think, um, does anybody else want to add anything else here? Or are we all looking like a, a good point to say, uh, say good evening or? I don't want to hang up. I'm hanging up. I don't want to. But I will. Um, I just, I just want to say thank y'all for doing this and for all the work you've put into the games. We really love y'all and appreciate y'all what she said oh, thank you thank you so much that really means a lot well you guys go have a wonderful evening uh okay. with the rest of your family and um uh we'll make sure to sh yeah we'll let you know when we're streaming this by the way and Great. we'll share we'll share when we have a, a copy to share so sounds fabulous thank you all so much ditto please take thank care you. of yourselves okay you too hang in there be safe ditto and happy dragon age day Happy, Happy Dragon Age Day! Dragon Age Day. Dragon Age Day. Dragon Age Day. <laughs>